stand to your timber and welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Austrian Pro Championships live from the Kessel House in Munich. And if you're asking yourself, why are the Austrian athletes competing in Germany? Well, I'll directly hand over the question to our expert, Troy Mannering. Troy, why is that so? And welcome. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, well, it's the perfect opportunity because the location is ideal. It's already set up. Uh, and our neighbors to the south, Austria, have a good opportunity here to be able to get back into that competition mode. And not just the Austrians. We are also having uh, European teams come by. Um, so it's a really great chance for everybody kind of getting back into competition mode that's inside of Europe to uh, really feel out that head-to-head uh, -head competition without an audience still, okay? We've still got those restrictions to deal with, but at least they're back together in one location to battle it out and uh, fight for points. So uh, that's a good thing. And the Kessel House, of course, is a beautiful place, uh, by the way. Pia, our field reporter, is already waiting in uh, the perfectly lit out arena that we're going to see the athletes competing today. Pia, everything good in Kessel House? Yes, everything's perfect. Uh, hello and welcome from my side, on site of the Austrian Pro Championship 2021 as well. If you've seen one of the last live streams, you already know this site. I'm at the Motor World in Munich at the Kessel House. And to be honest, I feel like this is my living room by now. But a pretty special living room, I gotta admit, with all the old machinery and all the heavy steel framework around here. Well, this venue was designed by the major architects Theodor Fischer and Otto Ernst Schweitzer and it has a capacity of 1,300 people and is 970 square meters big. So it's kind of huge. It used to be a power station and a production plant for locomotives before it was empty for about 10 years and boiler plants like the one right behind me which is by the way still an original <laughs> state, they used to supply Munich and its surroundings with energy by generating heat. Well, today it's getting hot in here as well. Not only in the last discipline, the hot saw, no already in the underhand job, because our athletes, they are ready. They are all warmed up. I hope you're too. I definitely am. And I'd say let's start, get started and heat this hall up a little bit. Now back to the studio. Thank you, Pia, and thank you for talking about uh, the powerhouse. I'm just not sure. Did she mean you or me? <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe, or maybe, our, or maybe our athletes. <laughs> let's maybe. take. Let's, let's take, take the elevator downstairs <laughs> and see if I can find out more information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look at the athletes competing today. All right, so we've got uh, Peter Rich right there. We're going to give you the short and uh, clear version. This is his first appearance, and you're going to see that a lot today with the Austrian uh, championships because there are a lot of guys that have just stepped over from the rookie rankings and making their first international or first national appearances. So you're going to see a ton of guys that are uh, really, you know, getting in there for the first time. Um, here's a guy that's been around for a while, though. Hermann Heiligebrunna, a big man, plenty of power in here. So keep an eye on him, especially in those chopping disciplines like the standing block chop and the underhand chop. And uh, one sawing discipline that's really strong for him is that single buck. Manuel Hoima, another guy. And there you can see all of the, uh, the uh, at signs down there for each of these guys. You can, uh, you know, connect with them as well and uh, find out a little bit more about them. He's another first timer on the national scene here. So, uh, and that doesn't mean that these guys are all first timers as far as Timber Sports is concerned. They have had rookie uh, appearances, but this is the first time in the pro level. Uh, level. Johannes Maurer, third place at the Austrian Championship in 2018. So, you know, he's got a little bit of experience underneath his belt as well. Coming Thomas Fushing. He's uh, a pretty big guy, 90 kilograms, 40 years old, second place in 2017 at the Austrian Championships, and he's had six appearances here so far, so there is some pedigree for him as well. Uh, we've seen Gunther Dahlinger yesterday competing oh, yeah. uh, in the Nations Cup, uh, and uh, you know, they uh, they managed to get fifth place or sixth place. It was sixth place yeah. uh, overall, which is very good. Two uh, personal bests for Darlinger. Yeah, as well. And uh, it's great. And you can see his results uh, in the past. And uh, he's had other appearances as well. 
Next up, uh, Yosef Laya, uh, the great mustache and beard of all time. When he's got that thing dressed, it is fantastic. <laughs> this is a uh, three-time Austrian champion. He's had 13 appearances, 15 uh, individual world championships, uh, 15th place at the individual world championship in 2010. So he's been around. And of course, Ooh. you know, the man that everybody in the Austrian uh, world will be looking at as far as this championship is concerned, Armin Kugler, six time Austrian champion, 10 appearances here. He's been in the international scene for quite a long time. And we just re nicknamed him Armin the Cat Kugler yesterday yeah. because of how he did on that springboard. Now, we do have a couple of guys in here that are not Austrians. Uh, Zolt Yushko. Uh, I hope I said that right. If I did not, please send us a hashtag at KissMyAx or at hashtag Steel Timber Sports and uh, let us know. Um, there are two athletes from outside of Austria that are going to be competing here today. Uh, Jonel Marinicia, excuse me, uh, from um, Romania as well. So uh, these guys are heartily welcome to compete, but they will not rank with the athletes from Austria. So we'll see them competing. They'll do all six disciplines, no matter how they end up in the first round or second round. It's an opportunity, though, for them to be able to get a little bit of extra practice under their belt, going up against some uh, some athletes from Austria. And you'll see this a lot. I mean, the Germans will have uh, other athletes invited to their contests and vice versa and so on and so forth. So it's you're going to see it mixing it up. And it Great is one big family. Absolutely. So this is an opportunity for these guys that are showing up this event just to get a little bit of extra practice under their belt for when it comes time to get really busy on their home turf or in the international scene. And just to get a little bit of info on the formats and, of course, our first discipline, uh, well, watch our next video. Everything you need to know coming up. The Steel Timber Sports Individual Competition. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines. The underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block chop. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. In round one, a difference of one point applies in each discipline, thus the fastest athlete received 12 points and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In this second round, the remaining athletes compete in the single buck and the springboard for increased scores. With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible in the hot saw, as an increased score interval of three points applies in this final round. The fastest athlete can score up to 18 points at the hot saw, the slowest only three points. The athlete who manages to achieve the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut through a 32 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. So let's take a look at the starting order. We'll have a single man competing in heat number one. That's our guest athlete, Scholt Juschko. Then in heat two, Peter Rich will take on Stefan Penker. In heat three, Hermann Heiligenbronner against Manuel Haumer. Heat four, Johannes Maurer versus Thomas Fasching. Heat five, Günther Dallinger against Josef Leier. And in heat six, Jolen Lel Martin da oh man. Marinica. Marinica, thank you, against Armin the Cat Kugler. And we're ready to go. 
<laughs> rock and roll. Yeah, and I thought I would murder that name, but uh, you did a great job on that we one. We practiced it before the <laughs> we show. We practiced it. The one thing oh, well. I'm going to have problems with is Johannes Maurer. It's all those R's in the mix. All right. So this is a tough job for Schott here. He's got to be on his own on stage and try and get a good time. But as you know, he is a guest athlete. So it's uh, really about a chance for him to practice. And, and you get to see here the technique and, and uh, actually work on that a little bit as an athlete on stage on this underhand chop. What's important here? It's just to try and uh, get a really good amount of power, but you don't want to throw too much power at this block, so you need to cut accurately and clean. And we say this a lot, if you have a lot of power on that chop, it's going to get stuck in the block. And we've seen that a couple of times already with Zsolt Yushko. And um, yeah, his time's just passing the 33 mark there. It'll be interesting to see what he actually manages to pull off as I don't have a personal best time for him listed, but, oh, well, there you go. I, I spoke have, too soon. Now, now we have, have a personal best, 41.36, <laughs> a personal best there for Jolt Yushko. And we always say this, personal best, it may not sound like an awesome time, but for these athletes, every time a personal best is achieved, it's another rung on the ladder to becoming a better timber sports athlete. So good job by him. What a start into the competition by yeah. him. Not bad. Okay, your cut was good. Oh, I was hoping both cuts are good. <laughs> uh, that's our favorite sentence. Yeah, that's our favorite sentence. All right, taking a look back at the slow-mo here. Uh, pretty concentrated. It's a nice opportunity and uh, very gracious of the Austrians to uh, allow a couple of guys who are not Austrian to join in on their competition. And there's what I was talking about. That axe was hooked in there bright and proper. Took him quite a while to get it out. And even on the other side, as he turned around, he got the axe caught a couple of times. So each time that axe gets stuck in the wood, it takes away from your flow. It takes away from the action of getting a cut and slabbing that block out. And it also takes away from your time. So the idea is to try and be as accurate as possible. And his cuts looked really pretty good. You know, it's, it's everything um, about getting really accurate hits there, Marcus. And you can see there was a couple of, of steps in there, but on the one side, he had some really nice hits. And now yeah, I like his shoes. Going for the style points. <laughs> Why not? Actually, it looked just like the ones you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, I would show them to you, but no, I'm <laughs> going to leave them hidden. All right, next heat coming up, Peter Rich uh, against Stefan Penker. Very nice. I got it right. Yep, I hope. Absolutely. Huh? So a couple of guys who are uh, joining into this competition for the first time, and, and you're going to see a lot of um, newbies, let's put it that way, to the national competition level here. And uh, this is going to be an opportunity for them to break into the pro scene at the national level. And then hopefully we'll see them move gradually on to the pro level in the international uh, scene. So, you know, this is a really good opportunity for these guys to get on stage and learn about themselves and learn from the other pros Athletes, that are here. ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two. One, go! So as our first head-to-head -head gets underway, this is a great chance for these two guys, like I was saying, to learn about themselves, figure out what's going to work. But also, with a head-to-head, -head, you know you've got another guy on stage there. And even though these times are what's important, going up against another guy gives you that extra push, that extra motivation to try and beat the guy next to you on that stand. So... It is Peter Rich that's just moved over to the other side, a stroke ahead of Stefan Pinka. And uh, Peter Rich looks like he's got a good advantage. Oh, but a huge stick by Rich gives the opportunity for Pinker to slab out a couple of nice blocks. But Pinker as well got a nice catch on his block as well. So uh, it's going to be Peter Rich with a 38-40. And I, be I believe we're going to see quite a few personal bests fall today with these guys stepping on the stage in their first national pro competitions as Penker tries to get through that block and struggles with a 52-46 and another personal best. So the motivation is there, the adrenaline is there, the pressure from the other guy on stage is there, and two personal bests have fallen by the wayside once again. So we've had a really nice couple of weeks here in the Kessel House where personal bests for the rookies and the pros have just gone flying out the window. So this is nice, this is nice to see. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. Okay, 
both cuts are good. There it is. For the first time today, <laughs> both cuts are good. Yes. And we're not referring to her, our hairstyles, are we? No, not at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Especially mine. Um, what I will point out here is that when we see the results later on, you'll see the two guest athletes always at the bottom of the list. I believe they're going to put them at the bottom of the list every single time because their results won't count against the Austrian competitors, but they will go through all six disciplines today, including the hot saw later on. So as I said, off the top of the show, just as a reminder, this is an opportunity for our guest athletes to step into the competition and get a little bit of practice. And we can see here in these slow-mos, these guys doing a pretty good job, a couple of ax sticks, but that's stuff that comes from time and experience and just learning what the wood does and how your axes react to the wood. But a very nice cut by Peter Rich for a time of 38 to 21 to take the top time so far. So that time has been locked in and is official, and that will be the time to beat for the moment in underhand chop. We should also send a big shout out to, and because we kind of ignored these guys yesterday, uh, the guys that are cleaning and setting up the stage between oh, each yes. of these rounds. They do such a good job, and it's such an important job as well that uh, they get in there and really make sure that stage is safe and clean for these guys. All right. Now, we mentioned Hermann Heiligebrunner earlier on. He is a big, powerful man. You saw his personal best time for the underhand chop was uh, 41, uh, excuse me, 30.92. So Effie. he will have the advantage going Ready. up against Manuel Hoima. to your timber. Three, two, one, go. And right away you can see Heiligebrunner really working that ax quickly. And that is a lot of power that's going into that block right there. And the fact that he's such a big guy and moves so quickly and so agilely says a lot about what's going on underneath the surface there because he is so quick with that axe. Now he's moved over to the other side of his block and is slamming away at thing. Oh, a big step down there. That's going to cost him a bit of time. Hoimer on the other side is also doing a great job to try and keep up with Heiligebrunner. And could it be that uh, Herrmann's going to get through there in a short, uh, quicker time than his best time? I hope so. It would be nice to see a couple more personal best go but it's not gonna happen in this case as Hoimer actually comes from behind Whoa. and does nail a personal best with a 42-45. A great job by him. And Heiligebrunner surprisingly struggled on the other side of his block. Where did Helma come from? Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Now Heiligebrunner there, he moved over to the other side of his block very quickly. The first side, he just hammered away on and he had those quick hits, that rapid ax movement. And, uh, and also using that power and skill right, that he's got. All right, both cuts are good. So using that power and skill that he's got to really, really get that axe moving, he did step down as he moved over to the other side. So that could have put him off his rhythm and could be the cause for a little bit of a slower time. But I was so focused on, on Heiligenbrunner, I didn't see Halma come. And then suddenly, bam, yeah. he was through, you know? Yeah, Halma was right there. I mean, uh, really surprising as he was about one, two strokes behind Heiligenbrunner. I, I would say even he, four or five. Yeah, could be. You might be right. I mean, he came around really late, but he came around to the other side and he kept his rhythm going. And I think that was the key there is just keeping that rhythm. There you see Heiligenbrunner, big man, big hits. He was fast with the ax to start. And uh, there you see Hoima. He was very ginger about moving over to this other side. And you can see in the backside there really quickly, the step down by Heiligebrunner. And when you step down, you can't swing the ax. Otherwise, you risk a DQ. And that's the case where he's got to get back up and get back into that rhythm. But Hoima, what a great job by him. Hits a personal best. And he is sitting in second place behind Peter Rich. Peter Rich still holding on to the fastest time of the day and the time to beat with a 38-21. All right, next up we have heat number four, Johannes Maurer <laughs> and Thomas Fasching. I, I'm laughing at myself saying the name, and I'm thinking... Sounds good. Did I get Sounds it right? Good. Did yeah, I get absolutely. it right? Maurer, yeah, perfect. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm uh, going to pat myself on the back you, on you that one. You gave it an Austrian run. touch. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go, getting ready for these guys in heat number four, Johannes Maurer and uh, Thomas Fasching. I think I better just stop saying it uh, <laughs> and stick with Johannes, Joe, and uh, maybe I won't murder it too Effie. badly. Here Ready. we go. 
Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! I have a lot of fun with the Finnish athletes. Their names are really great. But in the meantime, uh, we're watching Joe M and T Fash. Really nice, accurate cuts there. I can't. I think that is uh, Thomas Fashing. Yes, it is. Big stick there, and it is Maurer that's moved over to the other side of his block first. Fashing really long. It took him about seven, eight strokes with uh, Maurer already on the other side of his to get over. Maurer now working hard on the left-hand side of your screen to get through this block the rest of the way. Fashing doing a good job to try and catch up, but both of these guys have gotten a couple of axe sticks there and then uh, trying to keep that rhythm. They're in sync with each other at the moment. And now they've just lost that boy. It's really taking a long time here to get through this block for both of these guys. Just passing the minute mark. Maurer and Fashing. Fashing finally does it in 102.94 and Maurer in 104.65. Surprisingly slow times for both of these guys because I do know that both of them are much stronger in this discipline than you see here. The personal bests are both under 50 seconds. So obviously their pieces of wood were a little bit harder to get through than originally thought. Oh, maybe the pressure, you know, Kessel House, uh, be. big scenery, yeah. a lot of lights. Maybe they should TV pipe, coverage. Maybe they should pipe in some screaming fans. That might help. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Always helps. Always. Oh uh oh, now it looks like we have an investigation. I don't know what stand that is. Is that Fashing? Okay, it looks like it is on Thomas Fashing's side. So that would be an unfortunate situation. And this is this is the one thing, you know, one of the two most common DQs in this particular discipline is a false start or too early of a start and cutting of the foothold. And now it's really important that they do not cut into the foothold of that block. So let's see what our judge says after they review and take a closer look at it. And they really do look at it closely to make sure it's fair for everybody. All right. Close. But... Both cuts are good. <laughs> so, he's safe. He's got a time locked in. Neither of those guys are going to be too keen on the time being well over a minute when they've both had times under 50 seconds in the past. So, yeah, we'll see what they have to say about that. All right, you can see here, I think that it mostly was about, it could be a few things playing a role here, Marcus. It could be, you know, first round jitters. It could be, uh, it could be, you know, the nerves of, of getting out there and, and battling. It could be the excitement of finally being back in competition against each other in a location. There's a bunch of stuff uh, and all, always the wood plays a role. You get into a flow, you get into a rhythm uh, and then it's okay. But sometimes those, those things start to, you know, they catch up on you. Accuracy here played a big role. You could see a lot of choppy cuts there. And so it wasn't super clean getting through. Um, I have battle. to say the location is just unbelievably impressive. Yeah, so the location you, is if nice. If you walk into Kessel House and you're not used to competing in, in places like this, it, it can be a bit of a problem on your nerves. I exactly. Imagine. All right. Gunther Darlinger and Josef Laya coming up next. I'm wondering if Josef has uh, waxed and styled his mustache as he has done in the past. It's such a signature thing for him, but look at his personal vest, 3091. So this will be a, tell, uh, a telltale situation for us as well to see if both of these guys who have really, really good personal bests uh, of under well under a minute. I mean, uh, personal best for a Josef Lyer, like I just said, 30.91, three-time Austrian champion. And uh, personal best for Gunther Dahlinger is a 46.57. So uh, it will be interesting Athlete. to see if either of these Ready. guys have significantly Stand slower to times timber. today. And then we'll know Three, it's a wood issue. Two, one, go! So Gunther Dahlinger is actually on the right hand side of your screen here. Josef Leier on uh, the uh, left hand side. As we get a front view, then those name tags at the bottom of the screen you see will be in the correct position. And uh, both of them working really well. It's Segunta Dallinger who actually moved over to the other side, who's been cutting the last 
few weeks. He also cut yesterday in the Nations Cup, and Josef Flyer has finally moved over to the other side of his block. I think he's about four or five strokes behind. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. He's a pretty quick cutter here, and uh, they both gone past. Oh my goodness! Gunther Dallinger with another personal best, 35-44. He actually obliterated his previous personal best by a good five seconds. So that is a great job by Gunther Dallinger. Josef Leier struggling to try and get through. Finally does it in 52-10. So he's going to be really not happy with that time. But that tells me one thing. The logs are fair for everybody, but they're obviously playing a key role in how well they're cutting. Big smile from Josef Laya, but behind that okay, smile... Okay, both cuts are good. You know that he is unhappy with the way that that cut went down, given that he has a 30-second cut in the past. All right, so one more heat to go in the underhand chop. And that is going to be Ionel Marinica against yeah. Armin Kugler. So Ionel Marinica, uh, one of our guest hitters, one of our guest tim timber sports athletes going up against, yeah, arguably the best Austrian in the competition, and that is Armin Kugler. And uh, we've just been given a little bit of information about Manuel Hauma. He is injured. Now, we don't know what the specifics of his injury are, but he has backed out of the competition. So that will be one athlete fewer through the competition here. So we will be back to having two guys in each heat because of uh, that first heat only had one guy. So and that, of course, is uh, very sad for Hauma being yeah. out of competition right after the first discipline with the personal best. So he started off really well. I didn't yeah, actually really. see himself uh, getting injured in that uh, discipline, but uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll get some more. Yeah, I mean, it could be anything. I don't think we had an impact injury or anything there. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get some more information on that later on and try and update you on. Look at the personal best, though, of Armin Kugler, 1912. Ionel Marinica, also really a solid personal best for him, too, with a 3529. Um, I'm going to say advantage definitely goes to Armin Kugler, and it's a good opportunity for Marinica to test himself against one of the best in the world, actually, the cat Kugler. <laughs> mm. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Wow, look at Marinichi go. He is really working it to try and, uh, you know, get that practice in and see how he can hold himself against some of the best in the world. And Armin Kugler on the other side doing quite the same. And it's actually a good switch over, a transition by both of these guys. Well stood and uh, very quick. And we could see some very fast times for both of them. Ari Nietzsche may well get a personal best here. Let's see if he can manage to get it. It's going to be close. Mm, Kugler with a 26.50. Marinica needs to split it now, if at all. No, it's not going to happen. A personal best for Marinica is not going to happen today, but he does get it through in a 36.57. So the time to beat prior to this heat was belonging to Gunther Dahlinger with a 35.21, and Armin Kugler just went past that with a 26.26. Kugler was very impressive yesterday. Yes, very. And uh, he seems to have taken that form to the next day. Absolutely. Where I mean, he was super impressive okay, in that cuts uh, springboard as well. Good. I liked what he was doing there. So that's why you called him the cat. That's why now. I called him the cat. <laughs> and exactly. now he's uh, I mean, the cat Kugler. Yeah, that's a name that's hopefully going to stick because it's appropriate. All right. So that means our underhand chop is done and dusted. We'll take a look back here at the slow-mos from this particular heat. Remembering that our two guest athletes will always be at the bottom two positions in the results. So I've just been given a little bit of information on Manuel Hoima. Uh, it turns out that he twisted his knee in the underhand chop. Now, I don't know where he or did it, did it or how he did it, but uh, he went to the medical staff immediately afterwards and they checked him out, worked on him, and they recommended that he not compete anymore in the competition. That's a tough one as well because, you know, so much of this comes from 
pushing off of the leg and and really turning your hips. And if you've got a twisted knee, it just oh, makes everything it. impossible. And uh, you know, and adding serious injuries can occur. yeah, it's serious can injuries can occur. And adding insult to injury, you just don't want to do that. So it's probably better that he did say okay. I know my body well enough to walk away from this one, and uh, we wish him the best in recovery and hope to see him back at it soon. So they're checking uh, in the overall results. They will be the same as the underhand chop results as this is our first discipline in round number one. Armin Kugler at the top of the board. And of course, as Armin Kugler is leading after this first discipline, uh, let's hand it over to the Kessel House and to, to Pia to talk to Armin the Cat Kugler. Yes, thank you. I'm standing right next to Armin Kugler. Armin. It is whispered that you're kind of the favorite today at this competition. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I know about this and it's a little bit pressure because I also want to qualify for the world championship if it will happen. And so I have to do my very best and there is no chance for a safe trip. Yeah, the time on the underhand is, is okay. It is not very good. Uh, I can do it better, but I think it will be okay for now. I'm sure it will. And you've done great yesterday. Like, you did a really great performance. Do you think you will continue today? Yeah, I hope so. We will see in the next disciplines. Well, I have my fingers crossed for you. Thank you for your time and your interview. And good luck. Back to the studio. <laughs> Thank you, Pia. Thank you, Armin. Uh, talking about the next discipline, it is, of course, the Stockso. And all you need to know about the Stockso coming up right now. The Steel MS661 CM Stock Saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark, one downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. So here we have the starting list for the stock. So in heat one, it will be Scholt Yushko again going all by himself. In heat two, Peter Rich and Stefan Penker. Heat three will consist of Manuel Haumer and Johannes Maurer. In heat four, Lionel Marinica against Josef Leier. Heat five, Armin Kugler against Thomas Fasching. And heat six, Günther Dallinger against Hermann Heiligenbrunner. And of course, uh, we have heard about the injury of uh, one of our athletes and uh, that will be considered in these heats. So Troy, off to you and off to heat number one. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's going to be two heats in this case where we're not going to see uh, two athletes. And I thought they would readjust that a little bit so that we could have head-to-head -head heats all the way through, but they obviously wanted to keep their timing and data uh, more or less secure. Ready. So we've Stand got a single timber. heat going on here with Zolt Three, Yushko to two, start things off one, for us. Go! Nice start. Looks like he's got a lot of pressure on that saw coming through, though, and that's slowing him down a bit as the tip of the blade disappearing into the block. Two cuts. Both cookies looking good. They'll check that to make sure that it's all good. Okay, your cut is good. All right, so we've got a solid cut right there, 12.96. Also, a pretty respectable time for Zolt Yushko. All right, so the next heat coming out onto the stage will be heat number two with Peter Rich and Stefan Penka. Now, in heat number three, we'll only have Johannes Maurer. Uh, uh, it was Manuel Hoima, I believe, that was uh, injured. Absolutely, yes. So uh, he will not be competing in heat number three as far as we understand. He has backed out of competition so far. So it will be heat number three, a single person heat again. But as we take a look back at Jolt Yushko here, 
Yeah, that first cut seemed to be a little bit lagging. It could be that he pushed a little bit too much on the saw. And the upcut, that saw wanted to push back in. And uh, uh, we sort of saw the tip of the blade disappear into the log, which is not something that you want to have happen. You want to make sure that you keep a uh, nice even cut and make sure that you don't have any threads or anything hanging on or any risk of an incomplete cookie there. But he had nice thin cookies, so thin to win is our motto in that case. So he did a good job. All right, so heat number two, Peter Rich, Stefan Pinka coming up against each other. Now you see a lot of this mental preparation going on. These guys with the uh, dead saw, they will check the lift, they'll check the placement to make sure that everything is really absolutely the way they hope it will be. And Warm up your Again, saw. this discipline is not about power, it's more about precision and technique. The saw does the work as long as you let it do the work. If you put too much pressure on it, the blade or the chain could stall and stop. You don't want that. If you put uh, too little pressure on it, it's not going to cut cleanly and quickly. So you have to find exactly the right amount of pressure. Here we go. Timber. Three, two, one, go. Really nice start. Here we go. All right, a nice heat there by Penker and Rich, both of them hitting personal best. Penker with a nice time of 11.40 takes over the top spot in Hot Saw. And Peter Rich with a good solid time of 12.24 sits in second place. Now, of course, we're not seeing so Yushko in the mix as explained All right, because they're guest are. athletes. Good. And we have good cuts there. And Johannes Maurer, excuse me, not Manuel Heumer, Johannes Maurer is a non-starter because of injuries. So... Let's take a look back here at the slow-mo of this particular heat. Lots of nerves for these guys, especially first-timers on the national competition pro scene. Really good start there by Stefan Penker, though. He was on that saw and on the top of the log quickly. So obviously, this is a discipline where he has no problem with getting into it right away. It was a nice, clean cut. Barely any bottom swing as he transitioned to the upstroke. And then that last little bit right there, really good finish for him and a time of 11.20 and both of these guys in personal best. So that adrenaline is pumping and uh, they are definitely working the saw and the blocks to their advantage here to add some personal bests under their belts. Okay, so Manuel Haumer will not be uh, coming out there. I'm, I'm looking at Johannes Maurer as well as a DNS. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there because in our results list, he's been shown as a DNS. So, uh, yeah. So Manuel Haumer is on stage now. Yep, there you go. So it's going to be a single athlete on stage. At the uh, warm up your saw. At the ready, stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So, Manuel Hauma. Good first cut for him. Trying to get it inside the 12 second mark. Oh, he'll just be over 12 seconds, but it will be a personal best for him. And he's sitting in second place right behind Stefan Penka. So a great job. Three personal bests so far for our first right, three competing athletes. Good. And it's really nice to see uh, Halma back in the race because we have been told that he injured himself, but obviously it is Johannes Maurer yes. that has uh, twisted his knee. And I think uh, Halma with uh, two absolutely great results in the first two disciplines. Yeah, was, absolutely. I mean, his underhand chop. going his way. His underhand chop was a 42.10, a personal best, and he just got a personal best in stock saw as well. So a really good job. And he is currently sitting in second place in the stock saw results.
That one cookie was pretty thick, though. Uh, I don't know if the first cookie was the thin one. I believe the first cookie was the thin one, but that second cookie, that was, um, yeah, a bit of a, a thick brick. You could build a log cabin with that one as a base. All right. Uh, Yonel Marinica up against Josef Laya. National record, by the way, 1060. So these guys are real close. World record, 914. So here we are back in the studio. That is a little surprising, but uh, does not matter at all <laughs> because we know that uh, Stefan Penke has the best time so far, which mm -hmm. is a little surprising for me. Personal best for the top three athletes, Manuel Hauma and uh, Peter Rich, also with personal bests on that stage. So that yep. is a fantastic start into these Austrian championships. Yeah, and if you look at the time of Stefan Penka, he's really only one second off the national record for Austria. So that says a lot, especially for a guy that's coming into the first time. Yeah. All right, here we go. Josef Laya. Checking his finger position. That's Ready. also really important. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, a bit of a chunky start by Laya. He got up there quickly, but then he kind of struggled with the start. Marinica, good first cookie, and that second cookie looks really solid for Laya, and he's got a great time of 12.63. Solid, that'll put him in fourth place at the moment. And a bit of a strange shaped cookie there by Marinica. So they're going to check his cut. <laughs> Looks like you're not happy with the cookies today, Troy. No, nah, the cookies <laughs> are bugging me, man. Okay, both cuts are me. You always say pin to win, but I don't see anything cookies. <laughs> no, we had some beasts out there as far as the, the thick cookies are going on. I think the best cookie we've seen so far actually came from Manuel Hoima's second cookie. Uh, but the first one was, I don't know what was the first one or the second one that was thin, but it was a good one. But you need two thin cookies to get a record time, don't you? You need to have really thin cookies. I mean, they need to be paper thin, but y'all also have to be really careful that those cookies stay solid when they hit the ground. Because oh, yeah, you have to have yesterday. complete cookies. And you can see this first one here by Yosef. I think that's Yosef Laya is uh, really pretty thick. And then the second one was a little bit better. The other thing you have to be really careful of in this stock saw uh, discipline is that you only have 10 centimeters. Within that 10 centimeter in centimeter range, you have to cut those two cookies. If you go over the line, then you know, you're know you disqualified. So there's a lot of stuff going on. There's always a lot of stuff going on, it seems like, but especially in this one, you got 10 centimeters, you got to cut those two cookies. So if you've got two five and a half centimeter wide cookies, okay, you're, done. you're in a bit of trouble, right? <laughs> But Laya is obviously enjoying the atmosphere. Great pictures. Look at that. Yeah, why not? He's having some fun. All right, heat number four. Uh, uh, excuse me. Wow, we're motoring. Heat number five, Armin Kugler, Thomas Fashing. So this will be a good test for Thomas Fashing here. He's got some experience. His time isn't really that far off, Armin Kugler. Armin Kugler has had a little bit more time to really put his skills to the test in competition recently, though, as we saw yesterday as well. Warm up your saw. Armin Kugler is so practiced at this, he doesn't even bother lifting the saw up. He just knows the position is right, or if it's not, Ethies, here we go. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Massive stance by Thomas Fashing as he's got that back foot way out there. And Armin Kugler got a bit of an angle going on on that first cut. We may have a uh, launch ramp there. And Thomas Fashing trying to find that second cut. And it looks like it's uh, going to be Kugler with a 12.53, Fashing with a slow upcut and a 15.41. So neither of these guys really killing their personal bests. And uh, Armin Kugler noticeably perturbed by his cuts. I think he wasn't super happy with it. <laughs> his face doesn't Okay, both so. cuts are good. So let me tell you one thing. I've just done my maths, Troy, and uh, the top three at the moment in the overall standings all have 20 points. So it's Kugler, Rich, 
and Halma all with 20 points. Wow. How about that? That's crazy. It's going to be an interesting uh, battle for the top spot here with that happening. And that tells you a lot about where these guys are at. Now, look at this launch ramp that uh, Kugler is building <laughs> there. Uh, he managed to readjust on the way down. And then on the upstroke, uh, he got a thick cookie. I mean, there are chocolate chip cookies that are uh, thicker than that for sure. Uh, but uh, that one, boy, that was a beast. Uh, that was Josef Lyer. There you see the cookie from Armin Kugler. And he had a quick look after the fact to make sure that that uh, didn't go over the line. He obviously was pretty worried about it. Mm -hmm. And immediately, his hands go up onto his hips, and he's like, nah, nah not liking that one at all. <laughs> nope, this is no good. That's the cat move, yep. All right, heat number six. Gunther Dallinger and Hermann Heiligebrunner. A couple of big boys, but here, and we say this often, Power has nothing to do with it here. This is about technique and how well you utilize that saw's own energy and chain in order to cut through cleanly. Now, Gunther Dallinger, as we saw yesterday, he's a competitor. He's oh, ready to go. Oh, he's, yeah. He's ready to take those next steps and, and really move to the next level. Warm up. Herman Heiliger has been around for a long time. So he has basically all muscle memory going here for these moves. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Nice start by both of these athletes. Gunther Dahlinger looking like he might be a little bit cleaner on the first cut. Oh, but he's cut out. So he's got a reset, and he's got a nice clean cut there. Was it Heilige Brunner or Gunther Dallinger that cut out? We'll have to wait for the slow mo, but it looks like it might have been Heilige Brunner that actually cut out. But he noticed it and reset the saw and came up. So Gunther Dallinger with a 13.45. Okay, and Herman Heiligebrunner with a 13.72. And those times will count now as these guys exit the stage and our crew comes on to make sure everything gets cleaned up. Really, really nice start there by Gunther Dallinger and Heiligebrunner. Oh, wow, that was... They were quick. I mean, geez. <laughs> like mirrored. Yeah, it was it was timed perfectly. Now it was it was Heiligebrunne, in fact, that did get the cutout, but he readjusted quickly, and that is the skill of that man right there. He was so fast to make the readjustment that he did actually, in fact, catch up with Gunther Dallinger and managed to get through just a couple of hundredths of a second behind him. So that's really really close. So here we have the overall standing coming up in just a moment. And uh, like I have already said before, the top three all have 20 points at and the, the moment. And the next two have 18 each. Hmm? Well, <laughs> so we can say the top five are all within striking distance. And then it's 16, 14 and 10 points. So yeah. everything and anything is still possible. Sounds very exciting. And, and if you ask me, try this is more or less the perfect starts into this competition. Yeah, it's really a balanced start, and we've seen a couple of slower times in a couple of the disciplines, but that doesn't really matter. You know, the guys are doing what they have to do. They all have to deal with the same conditions on stage, and, and uh, they're doing a great job. So uh, fantastic start with our first two disciplines in round one. And it is very entertaining. Uh, there's many characters like uh, Hermann Heiligenbrunner, and he is standing right next to Pia at this very moment. Uh, let's hear what he has to say. Pia, over to you. Thank you, Marcus. Yes, he's standing right next to me. Hermann, du hast gerade die Stocksaw um, accomplished. Was, was ist das Geheimnis dahinter? Was, ja. ja, die Stocksaw ist ganz schwierig. Die Stocksaw geht, sie geht oder sie geht nicht. Und manchmal kannst du machen, was du willst. Es geht einfach nicht. Und manchmal nimmst du einfach die Säge und schneist. Ich habe Hände ein bisschen weg, ich habe umsitzen, schräg angesetzt, habe gesehen, dass er Keil war. bin eigentlich zufrieden, dass kein Dicke geworden ist. Um, so I asked what's the secret in the stock saw discipline and he just said, well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just have to 
take what it, you get. And today, for example, he had a bit of a luck because there was a knot in the um, in the wood shop, but he made the best out of it, and he's very lucky that it's not a DQ. Um, und meine zweite Frage: Hast du irgendwelche speziellen Ziele für heute, für die heutige Competition? Ja, für heute liegt das Fokus natürlich auf der Single Park. Ich habe jetzt eine neue Single Park gekriegt heuer. Uh, ist eine Disziplin, die mir sehr gut liegt. Also da hoffe ich für eine richtig gute Zeit, wenn wir hinspringen. Das war die letzten Jahre nicht ganz so, so easy, aber gute Dinge, dass es so entlaufen. Ich drücke dir die Daumen. Also ich glaube an dich. So I asked if he has any specific goals for this competition today. And he answered yes with the um, single bug, right? Yeah, he got a new single bug. Um, and he's very keen to see if it works better than it used to. Um, I'm sure it will. Uh, good luck for that. And back to you, Marcus. Oh, wow. I really like this guy, Herman. Yeah. He's, he's such a character. I, Super. You know, he'd be brilliant to sit down, you know, maybe have a cold beer, talk about the contest and everything. And what I also We need like a translator, though, for him, for me, for sure. <laughs> I speak <laughs> yeah. German, but that, no, no chance. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a try. But even uh, there, you can see he's already focusing on the single bucket. Yeah. He says, he's, you know, he's got himself a new saw. He is uh, ready to do it. And, uh, well, we're ready for an analysis. Yes, let's take a look at the top two guys from Stocksaw. Well, you can see here on the side-by-side, -side, these guys weren't in the heat against each other, but they were very quick to get up onto the top of that block. The crucial point here for Stefan Penker was his upstroke. He barely had any swing down below, and he got through there on the upstroke very quickly. He wasn't that far behind or ahead of uh, Hauma, however, and uh, both of these guys really fast, and <laughs> coincidentally, one and two in that discipline. So are we going to get ready for the standing block chop? And there are maybe one or two things uh, you might not uh, necessarily know. Well, here comes the information you need. Standing block chop. At the standing block chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 30 centimeters has to be cut through both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. So here is the start list and what you wished for, Troy, has just happened. Uh, we're not going to see any athletes competing all by themselves. So we will have a rich take on Penke, Hauma against Yushko, Laia against Heiligenbrunner, Dallinger versus Fasching and Marinica against Kugler. All right, standing block chop. Such a difficult discipline. I mean, all of these are difficult, but you have to remember, these guys have battled through two disciplines in round one so far. This is the last and final discipline in round one before they get split up and sent on to round two. Here, it's about keeping the power and maintaining the power and the speed of the axe, but also the Effie. angle of the axe plays Ready. a huge role. Stand one small angle timber. change, and you might skip that Three, axe away two, or not get a one, good clean cut. Go. Here we go. Both of these guys really hitting well today. You can hear it as it impacts the wood. There's that, it's almost like a, a squish sound as that axe enters the wood. And look how accurate there, I believe that is Peter Rich that we're looking at. And uh, no, excuse me, that's Penka. Uh, so Stefan Penka moved over to the other side of his block. And basically at the same time, Peter Rich did as well because you heard that moment of silence just as they moved around to the other block. I'm going to say that uh, Stefan Penka is just a hair ahead of Peter Rich, and uh, they're both cutting, as I said, very well. Nice big slabs coming off the blocks for both of these guys to start off with. On the back side seems to be the trouble for a lot of the guys today on their blocks, and Peter Rich has done a good job to try and uh, get this one down. And a personal best for both of them, Peter Rich with a 46.97, and Stefan Penka also with a personal best of 48.20. As always, these times are unofficial until our stage judge gives the thumbs up. Both cuts are good, our favorite line, at which time all adjustments will have been finalized and made in competition control. All right, both cuts are good. 
So a couple of personal bests there, and uh, it doesn't look like they made any major adjustments to their times, but it was 0.94 seconds difference between these two guys. And of course, with each of these times and points accumulated in this uh, third discipline, the standings in the overall will shift and change. So right now what's happened is Peter Rich has moved up into the top spot with 32 points and Stefan Penka is sitting in second spot with 29. But we still have quite a few athletes to go in the standing block chop before we can separate it down to our eight guys moving on to the next round. And Troy, I've done my maths again. Nine personal bests so far. Wow, that's incredible. And of course, these two are just showing us their personal bests in slow motion. There's also a trend happening in timber sports. We're seeing a lot of guys. I mean, you notice timber sports in the past, huge boys. Oh, yeah. Plenty of power. And you look at them and you go, how can these guys be considered fit? They are. They're incredibly fit, believe it or not. But what we're seeing is a lot more slight, very slender guys coming into the sport as rookies and then moving into the pro divisions where you think, where does their power come from? Where I mentioned does it, it come from? <laughs> I mentioned it yesterday with a couple of the athletes. It's core power. It's core power. A lot of this comes from the core. If you've got a very strong core and work on those legs. Don't miss a leg day, folks. Kids out there, if you're listening and watching, don't don't miss a <laughs> leg day just because you want to have pipes, you know? Stand Not just disco pumping. Timber. Yeah. Three, two, one, go! All right, so... Manuel Hoima going up against Shojusko, Yusko. Both of these guys also slapping out really nicely. Oh, Yusko with a huge hookup there as he's got a big wide stance using that power from his core that I talked about earlier. Hoima now moving over to the other side. I do believe he was faster over to the other side than Yusko was, but uh, I didn't see them both. Yeah, he was definitely three strokes ahead of Yusko, maybe even four as he moved over to the other side. And you could see Yusko... He's got lots of energy still left, but he took a while to get over to the other side. The power of Hoimer, though, is really playing a big role for him. And let's see if he can get through there in under a minute's time as we get closer. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Good job. A personal best of 46-11 for Manuel Hoimer. And Zolt Yushko with a 50-24. He also records a personal best. So good job by our Hungarian friend who is joining the Austrians on stage today. What about that last stroke from Hoimer? Oh, yeah. my word. I thought there were more than just a couple of threads, <laughs> but he made, it, he made it look like uh, he was chopping butter. Okay, both cuts are good. Yeah. He is the big surprise for me so far. Hoima? No, no, yeah, yeah, definitely. He has been very, very solid so far today, and I really like watching him hit and saw. All right, let's take a look at the slow-mos here really quickly. Yushko getting right into it. Nice wide stance, really using that push off the back leg. And Hoima doing the same thing. You know, his angle was a little bit strange on a couple of those hits, it seems, but he made it work. Um, Yushko again, that picture of his position and stance, really using the power of his core, pushing off that back leg. And Hoima did exactly the same thing. You can see here, his position is down deep, but he's pushing off that back leg. This was the second side in that final blow, and look how pumped he <laughs> is right there. He's you a do, big I, boy with plenty of power, and uh, he really worked that to the best of his ability. Oh yeah, and he came out of nowhere because mm -hmm. this man, I've, I've been searching for results or anything. He, he... Hardly anything out there. <laughs> yeah, huh? and he's here and he's here to compete and yeah. that's uh, very, very enjoyable. Yeah, I love watching that stuff, especially when there's a dark horse in the mix. It's always oh, yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. That's going to be worrying for Armin, Armin Kugler, yeah? All right, so our next heat up, Josef the Mustache Liar going up against Hermann Heiligebrunner. I'm kind of disappointed that he didn't put the curls in today. I would have really loved to have seen that. Well, maybe he's saving that for... The award ceremony? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be nice. Get the right colors in your beard. So we saw the interview earlier on from Her Hermann Heiligebrunner, and he says the single buck is his discipline. It's the one that he excels at. And so far... I think his weakest discipline has been the stock side. He's been strong in both of the, or the chopping discipline stand to start, the underhand. So let's timber. see how he does in standing Three, block two, here against Josef Laya. Go! 
Now watch the technique by both of these guys. Two different body styles and body sizes all together, but both of them pushing off that back leg, using the hip twist, and then really trying to aim that ax properly. Josef Laya right there getting nice clean cuts on the first side. Hermann Heiligebrunner moving over to the other side. Now he's got plenty of power, but you can see He's also pushing off that back leg, using the twist in his core, and he has a strong core. You know it as he gets through on that first or that second side. Now, he did have a little bit of a skip and a stick there, but he's got it dropped at 35 oh, 27. Oh, wow. Hermann Heiligebrunner and wow, Josef Laya, not that far behind with a 38 20. Good job by both of these guys. And Heiligebrunner, by the way, takes the top time in standing block chop with that 35.03. So he does move into fourth place in the overall standings with the points so far with two more heats to go. All right, both cuts are good. Very, very nice heat there, though, between those two guys. Taking a look back at the replay here, Josef Laya. He's all about technique. He's just got such fantastic technique. His aim, his, his drives are really heavy drives, but because his targeting is so good, he's so solid on this discipline. Now, right there was that little skip and stick from Heiligebrunner on the first side, but you could see he then got the flow going again and decided, okay, time to move. Yeah, and Josef Laya again, and then another shot from Heiligebrunner. And this should be the final blow from Heiligebrunner. No, excuse me, one or two more. But, uh, boy, that last blow looked like he chopped through the whole block <laughs> from just one big chunk, and that's the power of that man. So he's happy to have that one done. There is the final blow from Josef Laya as well, I think. Or maybe that's the other angle from Heiligebrunner. Doesn't matter, Heilige Brunner with the fast time so far in standing block chop and Josef Leier with the second fastest time of 37.97. Still some personal best in the mix and I do believe we have Josef Leier waiting for us, don't we? Absolutely. Yes, back on site at the Castle House, right next to me, Josef Leier. Josef. Du hast jetzt die erste Runde hinter dir. Was ist deine Meinung zu deiner bisherigen Leistung so? Naja, den Umständen entsprechend. Ich habe dieses Jahr vor zu heiraten, habe am Betrieb einige Baustellen und da muss man natürlich auch Sportler Prioritäten setzen. Aber ich bin eigentlich sehr zufrieden, dass ich bin da. Wir haben endlich wieder einen Wettbewerb für die österreichische Meisterschaft mit den Freunden auf der Bühne zu stehen. Ist auch geil. Sounds amazing. So I asked, he's done his first first round successfully. Um, what is his opinion on his performance until now? And he said, well, depends. It's, there's a lot going on in his private life. Um, he's going to marry soon. And there uh, is a lot to do f at work. So he got to set priorities. But it's fun being on stage with his friends again and just killing it. So my second question. Um, du warst dreimal nationaler Champion. Meinst du, heute wird ein viertes Mal? Ja, das geht sich heute, glaube ich, nicht mehr aus. Die Leistungen waren einfach in den ersten drei Runden zu schwach. Ähm, was der in seinem Wettbewerb sagt, niemals nie. Es ist einfach der Tag noch nicht zu Ende. Aber dennoch vergönne ich es den Armin, der trainiert sehr hart. Der ist auch sehr stark und der ist schon weitergekommen. Vielen Dank für deine Zeit und noch viel Glück. So, I asked, um, he's been, no, I said, he's been national champion three times. If he thinks that he can do it today another time. And he said, well, he doesn't think so. The chances are bad because his performance hasn't been that good until now. But he would be happy for Armin if he gets it. And he will just enjoy the next few rounds. And he said, never say never. Well, with these words, I hand it back to you, Marcus. And that means we're directly in heat number five, a Troy, Günther Dallinger against Thomas Fasching. That could yeah. be a good one, right? I mean, it's, it, yeah, because Günther Dallinger Ready. here actually Stand has the slower timber. personal best Three, time two, than Thomas Fasching one, in this discipline. Go. But Günther Dallinger, we saw yesterday, is really, really improved. So he may get another personal best here. Thomas Fasching, you can see that really wide stance. And every time he takes a step off that back foot, he's lifting his front foot to step into the hit. 
Now, that can apply, apply a little bit more pressure to the axe and a little bit more speed and power, but there's also the risk of if his front foot hits a piece of that slough that's fallen off of uh, one of those slabs, he could slip away. So it's always best to keep both feet on the ground, but everybody has their own way of doing things. Both of these guys on the second side of their block, Gunther Dallinger looking really good. His accuracy is on point, but it is Thomas Fashing with a 37-87. Gunther Dallinger has a chance to get a personal best here, but he's coming pretty close to it. And now uh, he's gone past it, but it should come down fairly soon for Gunther. And uh, we saw that his accuracy on the front side was very good, getting a little bit of support from Thomas Fashing on the back side there. You can hear him screaming, but that is a disappointing time for Gunther Dallinger at 55.90. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be well unhappy with that result and down at the bottom of the standing block chop list. And he's in a tough spot right now because he is sitting in sixth place with one more heat to go so he should be safe to move on to the next round but uh you're all. <laughs> yeah both cuts are good <laughs> look at that yeah, nice gotta be happy with that 30 oh, yeah. 3805 puts him in third place in the standing block chop rankings and that moves him into Let's see where he's at. Actually, he's sitting in seventh behind Gunther Dallinger in the overall standings with 20 points. But the top three positions are interesting. <laughs> top spot, Manuel Hoima, 29 points. Second spot, Peter Rich, 28 points. Third spot, Josef Leier, 27 points. Fourth spot, him and Heilige Brunner, 26 points. Keep going, keep going. Fifth spot, Stefan Penka, 25 points. And sixth spot, Gunther Dallinger, 24 points. Always just what? one point between them. What? And Armin Kugler is still to come. Still to come, yeah. So that's going to be the, uh, I think, maybe the straw that broke the camel's back of that little points count I just did. Uh, there you can see that uh, final hit from Thomas Fasching. You know what fashing means in English, by the way? Party. Yeah, party, carnival, yeah. I had to think of that when he lifted up both of the axes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and took a couple of hoppy steps to get to the front where the judges were waiting for him. Yeah, it was interesting for Gunther Dallinger, though. He, he looked fantastic on the first side. His accuracy was right on point. It could be that, you know, after those first two disciplines he got a little bit tired and then came into this one and uh, put a, a lot of effort into that first side and lost a bit of power in the second side so when you lose that power you when you lose uh, the the stability in your wrists and uh, the axe starts to twist on you a little bit so yeah that could have been what's happening there and uh, yeah now we get ready for our final heat in the standing block chop heat number six Yonel Marinicha against Armin Kugler. I think I've I've uh, said the first name of Marinicha four different ways since we started the show. Well, one of them might be right. So. One of them might be right, so I'll get it along the way somewhere, and then we'll just record that one and uh, and uh, set it up for the rest of the world. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So top time for Kugler, by the way, twenty point. 6-6 and a personal best for Yonel Maranicha is 32-30. Uh, nice for Kugler to have somebody out there with him and I do believe that uh, Maranicha was actually first over to the other side against Kugler here. I'm not quite sure. No, Kugler's on the other side already and uh, looking like he's good. Bit of an axe stick there but it's starting to wiggle on top and one more blow should do it and that's it! 25-98 for Armin Kugler. And that is the fastest time so far in the standing block chop, and that's going to shift things around in the overall standings a little bit as well. And Yonel Maranicha, not bad, not bad at all. But as you know, the two guest athletes will not have results in the overall standings Okay, here. both cuts. Oh, Only the Austrians good. will count. So 26-48, a personal best for Maranicha though. Good job for him and congratulations on that. And Armin Kugler moves to the top of the over or the top of the uh, uh, standing block shop results as well as the overall ranking. So he's got himself 32 points and he's a good four points into the lead now as we aim towards round two, which will be the single buck and the springboard. 
And you'll see something a bit different in the round two with that single buck. It is going to be with assistance. The last couple of days we've seen without assistance. So uh, we'll explain the difference there shortly. And you can see here both of these guys just really working that block. But Armin Kugler is so strong. There's that oh, final great couple pictures. of blows from Armin Kugler. Look how deep that axe got in there. And he was... That's a point where you got to be real careful how you pull the axe out. You don't want to wedge or, or, or twist that axe so that you break the block off. That's a big deal because that could mean a disqualification. So you have to have a clean cut. And that means carefully pulling that stuck axe out of the thing. So <laughs> yeah, carefully. That's a, that's a difficult situation. <laughs> that's what they love doing, carefully pulling. Yeah, carefully <laughs> is exactly what these guys are all about. Yeah, absolutely. But there you see Armin Kugler in the overall position. Uh, unfortunately, our graphics didn't work there, Marcus. Oh, well, we've, we've got it all here. We know Armin Kugler is in the lead, and then it's Manuel Hauma and Peter Rich. But uh, what I need to say is those pictures are amazing. Yeah. Big shout outs to the camera crew. I mean, those slow motions, seeing those axes going into yeah. the wood, and uh, just love it. Yeah, it's a great job. I mean, everybody that's, that's uh, working the event is doing a fantastic job to really get us the best pictures possible. And uh, so, like you say, kudos to them. And we're going to get a quick heat analysis between Kugler and Heiligebrunner, the two fastest guys in that last discipline. Let's see the boys head to head. Yep. So you can see both of them really quick axes, very, very fast. Armin Kugler just trying to keep that flow going. Heiligebrunner doing the same thing. Armin Kugler was the first between these two guys to move over to the other side, but he didn't go as deep on the first side as Heiligebrunner did. Heiligebrunner did. Uh, Gesundheit. Uh, so <laughs> Hermann Heiligebrunner, he went a bit deeper than Kugler did, but Kugler had the really, really solid final hits. And then you'll see here a couple of strokes later, Hermann Heiligebrunner does the same thing, just blocks that thing down. Really, really nice final blow for him, but there was about 10 seconds difference between the two, 9.22 seconds in fact. So you can see the difference between these guys and why Armin Kugler is the six-time national champion. And the way he Austria. just walked and away after that last blow. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> that's it, it's done. <laughs> Absol exactly. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Uh, by the way, you can uh, watch us on Twitch as well with... Uh, Timber Tolga. Timber Tolga. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so if you want to drop him a line, uh, he loves that. And uh, there's a lot to talk about. And of course, we had the rookies uh, today as well competing, as well as the women. And uh, I, I think we're going to see some pictures of uh, that competition coming up in just a moment. And hopefully, Troy, uh, you can tell us a bit uh, about these youngsters coming up. I will do my best because we have absolutely a crop of young athletes in the rookie uh, category that are making steps to becoming future pros. And, and like I was saying earlier, there's a trend with the rookies where you're seeing a lot of very slight guys come through the ranks now. I believe we're looking at the women here, actually, and uh, let's. Uh, it's a, it's it's rookies and women. So we did have both competitions happening earlier today. Um, Lukas Vagasreiter, by the way, was the rookie winner earlier on today. He's been a solid competitor. We've seen him a few times in the last couple of days. He was in the rookie competition yesterday oh, for, Austria. for Austria. He yesterday, did a great yeah. job for Austria as well. So fantastic by him. And like you say, it, it, it's obvious to see they're all athletes. They've taken this very, very seriously. They're yeah. absolutely fit and they have to. And, and, and like you said, they had like three competitions uh, within four days. And that's, uh, you, you can only survive that if you're absolutely fit. Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. But uh, the other thing that's really nice to see here too is the women getting involved in the sport. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like we say, it's a family affair all around. Well, wives, mothers, and daughters are all getting involved in the sport. And, uh, and that's what we're seeing with the women coming out there and getting into the battle as well. But it was actually a Swiss woman, Yolanda Hagman, who won in the women's competition. There you see her on the left-hand side. And uh, we saw actually Yolanda Hagman competing against a couple of people in this very discipline, which is one of the things where she's very, very strong. So uh, Switzerland did get involved in this one as well as Austria. Juliana Einfalt was in the mix along with Arlen Übing and Nina Pokoyski. 
and uh, back to the rookies. Now this, for the rookies, this is one of those things where this is all about learning. This is all about finding your flow on that single buck. As uh, and in this case, they did have with assistance and you'll see their assistance there with a wedge in the top of the block there and some lubricant to make sure that that block doesn't bind on top uh, or on that saw and makes it a little bit easier to cut through, which is what we saw yesterday without assistance. And that was a big deal. And again, here we go with Yolanda Hagman on the left-hand side of your screen with the red jersey on. As she actually won the overall for the women and uh, oh, did a great job there as well. Not a bad last as I stroke, mentioned, wow. Lucas Vargas Reiter was the winner for the men, or the rookies rather. Yeah, but for these rookies, uh, it's all about learning, figuring out what is happening with the wood when they cut, how to recognize what works for them and what oh, doesn't. Wow. Look at this. How much power to strokes. put in there yeah, in these great. hits as well. And you're absolutely right. These young guys are coming with speed, power, and skill. But the, the advantage for them is they have a chance to learn from all of the best athletes in the world. And there you see Lo Yolanda and uh, uh, on the top of this uh, podium for the women for Switzerland, along with <laughs> Arlen Gibbing. And for the rookies, it was Lucas Vargasreiter on the top there. Great job. Uh, and he really enjoyed that, you know, jumping up that podium. Yeah. And, and like you say, that is the good thing about this competition. It's teaming up with the pros. Yeah. It, it, it's getting the whole family together. Yeah. And the progress that everybody's doing is absolutely unbelievable. And one of those competitions uh, is going to be the single buck. This is where you need a lot of progress. And uh, what the competition is all about, here it comes. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single Buck. The Single Buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc of a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. Well, we have lost Johannes Maurer, eight uh, athletes still remaining, and we will always have in heat one or two guest athletes. Uh, so it will be Scholt Juschko against Irland Marinica in the first heat, Thomas Fasching taking on Günther Dallinger in heat number two, Stefan Penke against Hermann Heiligenbronner in heat three, in heat four, Josef Leier against Peter Rich, and in heat five, Manuel Haumer gegen Armin Kugler. Gegen. Yeah, I mean, that's some words. <laughs> and, and, you and jumped into Peter, a little bit of Denglish there. I love it. And, and, and maybe it's Peter Rich, not Peter Rich. But <laughs> <laughs> let's let's stop. It's Yushka and Marinica. <laughs> All righty then. That's our, that's where we're going with this one today. All right, Schult Yushko and Yunel Marinica getting into business here. And we mentioned this yesterday. You see the saw upside down there for Yushko. That's an opportunity once that wedge is set and, uh, and or not wedge, but rather once that groove is set for the saw, he can turn that saw upside down and get a few practice strokes in there just to feel the movement, to make sure that his foot position is exactly right. And um, he has a wedger and a luber there so you can see them spraying both sides of the saw with a lubricant to make sure that the saw runs through Andy. cleanly and then as Ready. soon as the saw disappears Stand through the top to of the wood you'll timber. see the wedge put into place to, Three, to prevent two, the block from one, binding on the go. saw so let's see how these two guys do in the misery whip discipline the single buck 
So you can see frantic strokes there for Marinic as he tries to get through there quickly and the wedge goes into place. But he's very quick getting towards the bottom. Yushko also a little bit of trouble for Yushko as he struggles on those last few strokes as he stopped that saw and had to restart now twice with the angle being a little bit too much. And then he finally gets through with a 24.90. Marinica with an 18.31. And both of these guys marking down some personal bests. So again, big congratulations for each step moving forward and improving. And both of these guys getting personal bests here today okay, as they have an are. opportunity good. to practice with the Austrians. So really good job for them to uh, make sure that there's a little bit of help. All the setup and preparation for 25, maximum 25 seconds worth of work there. And uh, these guys, they absolutely made it work. Now here we see Yushko. He's a little bit frantic on his strokes. Even more frantic though is Marinica as he is just going for it. You know, he is a machine. Look at that, rah, 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 just attacking that saw. But you know what? He made it work. Absolutely. Yushko on the left-hand side of your screen, there was one hookup. That saw stopped. The angle became a little bit too hard. There's another hookup, the saw bowed. And at the bottom of that cookie, that's a dangerous thing to happen because if the cookie breaks off and leaves a little chunk at the bottom, you still have to cut away that chunk. Otherwise, it counts as an incomplete cookie and a disqualification. So there is still tons of stuff happening there with these guys. Next heat in the blocks. All right, we're back to our Austrian competitors. Heat 2, Thomas Fasching and Gunther Dahlinger. So Gunther Dahlinger at a meter 97 is the taller of the two men. Uh, Thomas Fasching a meter 83. Uh, Fasching does have really long legs, though. It's crazy. They go all the way to the ground. Um, but Gunther Dahlinger, he is a very, very tall man, and he can use that to his advantage, in this case, stepping well back from the block and being able to pull that saw through the complete length of that two meter crosscut saw. So really utilizing all of those cutting and sweeping teeth to his advantage. The question is though, is he actually gonna do that? Now look at his stance. He goes for the wide stance with that back foot well out there. Thomas Fashing, he's on the back side of the saw now, just practicing a couple of strokes as he sets that saw gingerly into place and then you can see Gunther Dahlinger's assistant getting that saw nice and lubed up. Gunther looking a little bit stressed there. As he knows he's going to have a good performance Stand here in the single box. Timber. Three, two, one, go! So interesting to look at the difference between these two guys. Thomas Fashing, the shorter of the two men, but actually using more of the saw in the start of this heat. But he did bow it a little bit as he got hooked up. Gunther Dahlinger, it looks like he has finally got into the rhythm. And you can see the two angles on both of these guys is really different. But it's going to be Gunther Dahlinger with a personal best of 22.04. Thomas Fashing with a 23.57. Nice times for both of these guys. And as always, we give, uh, give a big shout out to anybody that pulls off a personal best, you know. Here's a medal for you, here's a medal for you, a car for you, let's go! <laughs> but it's a, it's a good job because it just means that uh, we're getting a lot of improvement from these guys every step of the way. And in every event this year so far, we've seen quite a few personal best drops. So, you know, even with the COVID situation, these guys have been taking that time off to make sure that they're fit, that they're practicing their various disciplines, Brilliant. and okay, staying on top of what's are. happening out there. Good. Brilliant. Official times have been adjusted. 2182 personal best for Gunther Dahlinger. So a really, really good showing for him. And at the moment, he is the time to beat. So that nervous look from him right there. Yeah, maybe that was a good thing, actually. You know, the nerves, being able to control that a little bit and make that adrenaline work for you in this so discipline. So different techniques, like you mentioned. Yeah. Very nice to see. <laughs> And there you can see the saw completely disappears from the log and from view. And that means he's using more of the saw. And uh, the same thing for Thomas Fashing here, although he did get it stuck a couple of times, but a nice finish by Thomas Fashing there, really stroking right on through. Great job. But you can see him shaking his head. Not really super keen on that time as he has had a better personal best time in past, obviously.
I've often asked, and I had this conversation with Sterling Hart from Canada before about the handle of the single buck saw and if it would make sense to have a handle that rotates on a bearing for mm-hmm. that, if it would make it more efficient and easier to cut through those. And, and uh, What did he say? He wasn't really sure. He, he seemed to think that it was better to be able to uh, have a good solid grip on it without anything moving in there. But, uh, you know, I'm always in for, you know, trying yeah, yeah. to find every single cool. advantage. Yeah. So maybe we should try this. Yeah, sometime. maybe we should try this. We'll start manufacturing them now. <laughs> uh, can I borrow five bucks from you to start yeah, the build? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll give you seven. All right. <laughs> now, here's a man I'm really looking forward to seeing here. Hermann Heiligebrunner. He said this is his favorite discipline. And if it's his favorite discipline with oh. his power and his and his positioning, then uh, watch out, world, here I come. I, I'm getting the popcorn. And Josef Laia in his, is in the heat with uh, Heilige Brunner, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how both of these men manage to come through. Now, both of these guys have been in the previous heat against each other in the standing block chop. Ethnies. And it was Ready. Herman, Stand who was a little bit timber. faster. Let's see Three, if we can do this on two, the single one. Block. Go! All right, choppy starts really fast. Shortcuts to start things off with him and Heilige Brunello. He's finally found his rhythm. He's into it. He's a good, I would say, more than halfway through. And it's, uh, excuse me, Penka in this one. I had uh, Josef Leier in that, but I, I read a heat too late. And it's Heilige Brunello with a personal best of 15.27 and the fastest time of the day so far. Penka also with a 23.03 and a personal best. So again, personal best all over the map. And it is Heilige Brunner showing his skill with a 15.20 and the fastest time in single buck so far. All right, both cuts are good. Oh, that's a good sign. Both cuts are good. Official times are now locked and loaded. And that 15.20 will hold. Stefan Penka sitting in third place with a 22.83 just behind Gunther Dallinger and his 21.82. Very happy for Hammond Heiligenbrunner. Yes. Yeah, he's been uh, kind of out of the scene for the last year and a half. I mean, everybody has been uh, a little bit COVIDiated uh, because of having to sit at home and and uh, figure out different ways to occupy themselves. So to see these guys come back and come back this strong is really fantastic. And uh, yeah, Penka, I mean, knowing that he was going up against a guy who really loves this discipline, it's his favorite, he did a good job, and so sits now in third place in the single buck rankings. We have two more heats to go here. Oh, wait a minute now. Yes, two more heats. I am almost not telling you uh, falsehoods. <laughs> <laughs> heat number four with Josef Leier and Peter Rich, and heat number five with Manuel Hoima and Armin Kugler. So here we have the points so far. Heiling Brunner 16, Dallinger 14, Penka 12, and Fashing 10. But like you said, two more hits to come. Yep. So everything can change. And a whole bunch of personal bests just going out the window there. So that's awesome. And there we have Josef Leier. I uh, told uh, told you guys that he was in that last heat, which was a complete falsehood. So he is, in fact, in heat number four up against Peter Rich. Josef Leier, the man with the experience, Peter Rich. The guy who's new on the block in uh, the pro discipline on the national stage. So, uh, yeah, good opportunity to see how he fares against a man with a lot more experience. We should qualify that a little bit, though, that saying a lot of these guys that are coming in and having their first exposure as pros on the national level came from the rookie ranks, all of them, in fact. And so it's not like they don't have experience cutting and sawing, but they don't have experience at the highest level. And so that's what I mean. This experience for them is very, very important to really see how and where they stand with the best in their countries and eventually the best in the world. Well, it's like in tennis. You start off with future, you go to the challenger tournaments, and then you play the ATP tour. And yep. this, is, <laughs> this is the ATP this tour. This is the ATP. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! All right, Peter Rich on the right-hand side, Josef Leier on the left-hand side. There you can see the view of Josef Leier. Really great style, using that entire saw. He's got a pretty tall stance, but it seems to be working for him. But Peter Rich looking good. Oh! 
Ooh. Just a big catch at the bottom there by Peter Rich. He left a knuckle on the bottom, but he did cut through the knuckle, and he's got a great time. Wow. 18.46 for that young man. That is fantastic for Peter Rich. And uh, in fact, it looks like he might even be a hair faster than Joseph Lyer, but I believe that there is going to be adjust an adjustment here because Peter Rich did have a knuckle at the bottom that he needed to cut off. So there will be extra time added to his time once the competition control looks at everything. Okay, both cuts are good. Interesting. So it's been deemed official, and Josef Lyer, who I thought actually was faster... And, I, and I'm just being informed that their times will need to be double-checked because it was Josef Lyer who did cut through his cookie before Peter Rich, and we'll see this in the slow-mo here. Josef Lyer, again, his style, just fantastic on this discipline, using the entire length of that saw. Such an efficient cut. Now watch here as the cookie drops for Josef Lyer. There it goes, and Peter Rich bows the saw, and drops the cookie, he's got the knuckle, pulls it back, cuts the knuckle off. So definitely there will be a time adjustment and Josef Lyer will have the faster time than Peter Rich. It has not been logged into the system yet, but because that knuckle was cut off but by I Peter Rich. But I think Lyer also had a knuckle, a very small one because he was adjusting as well. Was he really? Okay, I, 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 I believe so. I part. believe so. Because I, I was he... focusing on him, and then he just he did it in a very special way. It was kind of, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, sneaky. That's, yeah, yeah, sneaky. Yeah. sneaky. <laughs> Getting the chisel and hammer out to get it off. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope we're gonna get to see that in slow motion as well. Well, we did get the thumbs up from our stage judge, who said both cuts are good. So that means they're fair cuts. We'll find out as we move on, and we'll update you as we move on. But in the meantime, oh, wow. we have our last. That's what I have been buck, waiting for. And it's a Manuel Hoima up against Armin Kugler. Now, the guy that you've been really impressed by, Manuel oh, yeah. Hoima, is really going to get to challenge himself against the best there is in Austria right now, and that is Armin Kugler. Armin is quite strong in this discipline with a personal best of 13 11. Hoima, however, no slouch with a time of 18 12. So, you know, he's not as fast as Kugler on best times, but you can't depend everything on the best times that you see from the past because wood changes, condition changes, you know, indoors, outdoors, all of these different factors play a role here. But we have seen Hoima with a fantastic day so far today, and he is obviously highly motivated. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Boimer was faster to draw the saw back on the first cut, and this is something we've seen with Armin Kugler in the past as well. He's a little bit slower on the draw, but look at how efficient his cuts are. And you can hear in the background, he's getting lots Whoa. of support. And that's a 14.28 for Kugler. But look at this by Hoimer. It's a personal best of 18.37 <laughs> and a fist bump, a pump. Yes, nice job. I love it. What else? He's just been hitting personal bests. <laughs> Unbelievable. After the other. Well, Armin Kugler with the 14.28 just got a little bit faster than Hermann Heiligebrunner, who, and I've just seen the adjustment in time here for us as well on our time screen. So Kugler actually at a 14.07. Heiligebrunner okay, is still in second place good. with a 15.20. But Manuel Hoima jumped into fourth place with his 18.19. And uh, there's still been no change on the Peter Rich Josef Lyer timing. So Peter Rich sitting in third place with an 18.12. And you could be right with Josef Lyer and his knuckle on the bottom. Um, so that could be the reason why his time was that much slower than Peter Rich. But in the meantime, we're looking at the playback here of Armin Kugler, who just went to town here using the entire <laughs> length of that saw. But oh, uh, Hoimer had a big bow out there. So that cost him a second or so. And there's that last drawback for Armin Kugler and a great time. And you see here, Hoima with a final cut there, and I bet you dollars to donuts he would have lost two seconds off his time had he not had that big bow out. But that's all about the experience on this discipline, and even those bow outs happen to the best of them. That's one of the reasons why they call this discipline the misery whip. <laughs> Five personal bests, by the way, in uh, the single buck so far. And that's just among the Austrians. Let's not forget our two guests had a personal best as well. So, there you see, 
some results switching things around a bit. Ooh, mm. Heiligebrunner bumping <laughs> up second place in the overall. Good job. Not bad at all. Well, one man I really want to meet, he is the big surprise for me so yeah. far, is Manuel Haumer. And hopefully he is ready to talk to us, or better, ready to talk to Pia in Kesselhaus right now. Over to you guys. Thank you. Yes, he is ready to talk to me, I think. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Manuel, du hattest gerade eine Personal Best, bist jetzt auf Platz 4. Was, was denkst du gerade? Ich muss offen und ehrlich sagen, mir geht eigentlich heute mehr auf, was ich im Training eigentlich gedacht habe oder erreicht habe. Somit hat sich die harte Arbeit auch ausgezahlt und die viele Zeit. Ich kann, glaube ich, bis jetzt äh, stolz sein auf meinen bisherigen Ver äh, Verlauf vom Bewerb. So I said, he just had a Personal Best and he's in place 4 now. What are his thoughts and he said well he's even more successful than in the training and that's what make what makes him pretty happy and it's paying off all the hard work so that's good and now what is your strategy for the next discipline it's uh, the springboard what is your plan plan is not really one of them we will just go to the next discipline so we can go to the other and it is not my favorite discipline but Schauen wir mal. So you've heard my question. I put it in English. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> But he answered, well, he won't do anything special about this discipline. He'll just get right into it. It's not his favorite, but he'll do his best. And ich glaube an dich, you'll be fine. So back to the studio. What a guy, Manuel Hammer. <laughs> and you, you know, he works for the fire brigade. No, I didn't so, know so that. So I, I, cool. I, I can just imagine him coming in, you know, the, there's fire everywhere and he's pushing away everything. I just stays calm, yeah. calm as a cucumber, you know, woo, all oh, easy. He seems but, yeah, pretty yeah. relaxed there. And yeah, uh, yeah springboard, I'm going to do the, the best I can there. Uh, Shama boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> that, that's the way to roll. And of course, if you want to know anything about the springboard, well, we'll tell you everything. Springboard. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees, climbing up over thick roots. First, notches known as pockets are chopped into the log. Two springboards are then anchored into these pockets. The athlete then climbs up to chop through a 27 centimeter thick block of wood in the fastest time possible. So here's the starting list for the springboard. Of course, as always in heat one, we'll see our guests, Jolt Yushko and Lionel Martinica. And then we'll start with heat number two and the Austrian competition. Thomas Fasching taking on Günther Dallinger. In heat three, Stefan Penke against Hermann Heiligenbrunner. In heat four, Josef Leier against Peter Rich. And finally, in heat number five, Manuel Haumer against Armin, the cat Kugler. All right, the springboard. What do you say about this particular discipline other than, holy smokes, folks, you got a <laughs> lot going on here. Um, as we know very little about these two athletes when this discipline is concerned, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle the springboard. What you saw in the description is only a portion of what's actually going on. Yeah, you have to cut a pocket. But you can't take forever cutting that pocket. <laughs> there is a time limit of two minutes and 30 seconds to get two boards in place, get onto the top board, and cut through that top block. So if they do go over the time, which we have seen many times in the last few weeks, then you are disqualified. So that's one of the main things that happens with this particular discipline is because of the time limit and uh, the, the effort that's required to really get those boards in place now well normally you you would think this could take a day you know it's a, not, not just two minutes and 30 seconds so it's always very impressive to see those big men getting yeah. up those trees and just chopping off the top of that log and and you know what we heard from Yosef earlier on uh, excuse me not uh, uh Yosef Manuel is that it's not his favorite discipline mm. yeah and You know, I can understand why. Being a bigger guy myself, I'm not going to be real super comfortable two meters up in the air why? and hammering away on a block there, especially if my board is sagging and I don't feel confident on that board. 
And that plays a huge, 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 huge role here. So it's really important to get those pockets set quickly and make sure that board is in a good position. And you don't want a flat board. You want your board to be angled up a little bit because then that means when you actually stand on the board, you can put your back foot out a little farther and that allows you, like on the flat ground, to push off that back foot, use your hips and the power coming from, as we say all day long and every day, the, the core, core to hit that top block. If you have a saggy board, which oh. no man wants, um, <laughs> no. you want to make sure <laughs> that uh, you know Ready. you have Stand a saggy board and you use all your power is coming from your Three, arms to cut two, away at that top one, block. So it's go. really difficult and it makes it more tiring. So let's see how we do here. All right, you see there's a lot of hits happening here just to set this pocket for Yushko. But he's got his board in place. Now look at how saggy that board is. Not nah, you don't want that. So he's going to go back and reset the pocket. And now this right here is the key in the springboard, making sure that you get that pocket set and getting it a board in position so that you can feel confident standing on that board. Now Marinicha is already on his top uh, board, but look at how that board is sagging, and that thing's not going to hold, and he is going to have to go back probably and reset that pocket because it is sagging badly. Unless he feels confident that that thing's holding on, but because of the angle, he's now depending on entirely his shoulders and upper body to cut away at that top block. At, at this point, it looks like he just doesn't care. He's going to want to keep working at it to try and get through that top block and not go past the two minute and 30 second mark. And you can see he's already winded. And now, yeah, that, uh, that board is sagging so badly. He's got to go back and reset it and try and get it in a more stable position. You just go. I don't know. He's just stopped entirely. I don't know what's happened over there. If if something has gone wrong with his board, or if he's just decided to give up on entirely. But Marty Nietzsche, he's a battler. He's not giving up. So he's going to reset that board and try and get in position and feel a little bit more comfortable about finishing the work on the top block. But that board is just looking really scary. And now he can't get his axe out because he's put it in su with such power. But again, you know, we're talking about the situation where you want to make sure you feel confident and that board's sagging at 45 degrees. It should be up at 45 or 30 degrees at the very minimum. But uh, now he's switched over to the other side. Now he's got 30 seconds to get through on the backside. Otherwise, we might be looking at a DQ here. And if he can do it, he'll have himself a time. But this is one of the most difficult disciplines to come into as you transition from being a rookie to a pro, which is one of the great things why... Uh, they've added a single board springboard to the rookie competition, which is so important for these guys. And uh, yeah, he's finally done it. He's got himself the national record of 226. And uh, it's a DQ for Yushko, who, I don't know, he just sort of gave up, which was a little bit surprising, quite honestly. But Mary Nietzsche, for me, is a very brave man. Yeah. I would not <laughs> dare to have a single hit on that board. Look at the angle on that board. Yeah. He's, he's pulling the Captain Morgan, holding that uh, <laughs> foot up on the top of the board. And uh, I would be oh. so nervous. And that's got to play uh, just games in your head watching that stuff. So, yeah, you're right. He's a brave man Whew. for standing up on that board the way it was sagging. I'd be curious to know what happened with uh, Jolt Yushko and why he didn't continue. Okay, you have a DQ. Uh, you did not make it within 2.30, and your cut was good. So it's Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger are telling us uh, that Mary Nietzsche's cut was good and he only had four and a half seconds left. So I, I really, really enjoyed watching him on those final, final seconds. Yeah. So you saw both of these guys in preparation. Um, both of them took quite a long time to set that first pocket, but it seemed like Josef, uh, excuse me, uh, Jolt Yushko just I don't know, his, his first pocket didn't satisfy him and, and uh, he just more or less gave up at that point. Now, there's the second pocket from Marinicha. Uh, you can see Yushko's board is sagging badly on the left-hand side of your screen there as he tries to set that second pocket. 
And I don't know, I didn't even know if he, he tried to put the board in place or, or not. We didn't really see it. And there, and there is uh, Maida Nietzsche, you know, kind of gingerly crawling down to try and reset his board. Finally gets the thing from the top and just a couple of safety hits on that last little piece that was left at the top there to make sure that he was uh, fair and safe. But he got through in, in under the 230 mark. So, yeah, that was a test right there of Will. Oh, definitely. And uh, maybe also a bit of a ooh, aha for, 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 for the Austrian guys, because it is yeah. a very, very difficult discipline. Yeah, it's super difficult. Uh, I mean, I've named it the kitty cat discipline because it's so finicky. There are two really finicky disciplines in uh, steel timber sports for me at the moment, and that's this one that we just saw, the springboard and the hot saw, because with these two, there's so many things going on that anything can really happen, and we're going to see the hot saw later, but we've still got lots of springboard to come with our Austrians getting in the mix now, and now is our chance to see who's been practicing their springboard, who's been practicing setting their pockets. Keep an eye out for the guys who are setting their pockets. A perfect pocket set is four hits and about a 30-degree angle on the board so that they can stand cleanly with their foot well back on the board and really use their power to an efficient level instead of having to, you know have both feet together and, and, and hit the board like this at the top because that just it takes forever. And you can see but that's at two what minutes I would and 30 be seconds, <laughs> you're, you're done and dusted and because you're tired I'm so out scared. after a while. But by the way, if you want to see the best in the world compete in the springboards, uh, why not do it on Amazon Prime? You can see steel timber sports there and uh, there's loads and loads and loads of great emotions coming up. Oh my God, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long, and it's Australia! When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, shouting, it's, it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. Some people nervous, it doesn't make me nervous. It makes me ready to go. To come here to the World Championships is, is one of my dreams. It has been ever since as a kid. Beautiful stuff and so much more to see. But for now, it's back to the Kessel House and eat number two. So Thomas Fashing actually has a personal best in springboard of two minutes and eight seconds. That is getting pretty close to the cutoff time, and he is going to want to improve on that today. Gunther Dahlinger, um, as we've seen in the past competition, he is okay where it comes to the springboard, but he's a big boy at 130 kilograms, so he's going to want to make sure that those boards are absolutely perfectly placed. But and please, as I mentioned please before... Do. I do not want to see yeah, anyone drop. No. I mean, you don't want to see anybody fall down, but definitely you don't want to see anybody fall from two meters up with a razor-sharp axe in their hand. You never know what's going to happen. So Absolutely. we'll cross our fingers for all of these situations. But what we have seen is that Gunther Dahlinger seems to be pretty solid in setting his pockets because he knows he's got to have a really steep board in order to hold his weight. And as a strong man, that is definitely his advantage if he can get up Eddie. there and really throw all Ready. his power into it. Stand to your timber three two one go thomas fashing at 90 kilos has my dream weight and uh he uh is the slider of the two this is about trying to get those pockets set really correctly and making sure that you can be up in a solid position now the bottom board isn't quite as important as the top board but it doesn't necessarily uh mean it can sag down and have that 30 degree slag in the the lower end now, both of these guys have their first board set. Thomas Fashing seems to be really solid with his second board already. It's about, yeah, well, he's got a bit of sag in there. He's not feeling it. And uh, you can see Dahlinger also has a bit of sag in his first board. So for him, it's going to be really important to get that second board set absolutely perfectly. Now, just to give you a bit of perspective here, folks, the perfect world happened in 
Stuttgart in, I believe, 2016 when Sterling Hart did this discipline in 35.67 seconds. These guys are already doubling that now. Um, not to say anything against how they're performing here, but the fastest in the world, and that's a world record that I'm thinking is probably not going to be broken for a long time because that was the perfect storm on that day for Sterling Hart. Gunther Dahlinger, Thomas Fasching, just passing the 1 meter tw or one minute 20 second, but it's Thomas Fasching who was up on top first. I'm hoping for both of these guys that we're going to see personal best, but uh, check out the board for Thomas Fasch Fasching on the left. It's flat, 90 degrees. So it's okay. It's not bad, but, you know, it would be optimal if he had a little bit more up angle. However, Gunther Dahlinger's board is sagging quite significantly, and that is not what he wants because now he's going to be depending on his shoulders and his upper body to do that work on the top block. And each time that he gets that axe stuck in there, it requires more effort and more energy to pull it out and start again. Thomas Fashing, on the other hand, has good flow going on the other side as we just passed the two-minute mark here. So... We're getting close to that timeout for both of these guys, and I'm really hoping that we don't see a DQ for either of these guys, but I'm having trouble imagining that they're going to get through in the time. We've got 15 seconds left for both of them to get through. Thomas Fashing may well do it, but he's coming real, real close, and he's got to get it done here with six seconds left to go. There he does it. Thomas Fashing has some points in the blocks, and it's a DQ for Dahlinger. Oh, that is unfortunate for Gunther Dahlinger. But Thomas Fashing, he fought and he fought and he fought and he got through. And the board right there for Gunther Dahlinger is the tell-all, absolutely why he didn't have the power. He's a big man. He can't have that sag. And if he didn't have that sag, if he had a lift, he would have been able to use that power that he has. He is so powerful. And had he had a good lift on the tail of his board, it would have been a different story. I promise you that because he has such a good standing block chop. And that's basically what you're doing up there on the top of that second All springboard. All right, your cut was good. And your cut is a DQ out of time. I almost felt sorry for him saying that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. A lot of sympathy for these athletes, no, no doubt about that. But Thomas Fasching uh, grabbing some points, uh, very important before we go into the hot saw. Of course, only six athletes will be able to go to that round. I mean, of, of the two disciplines that are in this second round, this one is the one that really is the key to getting into the hot saw because you can live and die with the points that you make here to making the top six to get that hot saw. And the hot saw is, as we call, the make or break discipline. So, uh, you know, you want to get there. You want to be in that hot saw list. And at the moment, it is... Uh, Gunther Dahlinger is, is out of it. Um, Thomas Fasching, ooh... He's on the bubble at fifth right now. So if he can stay fifth or sixth, then we'll see him in the hot saw. Unfortunately for Gunther Dahlinger, he just doesn't have enough points after that heat. And he is currently sitting in seventh place in the overall standing. So we won't see him in the hot saw. Uh, and again, he's going to look at this video footage. He's going to go back home and he's going to say, OK, how can I make those pockets happen quicker? And how can I make those pockets happen with more stability for my board? And that is really important in this discipline. It's the it's really the the only thing about this discipline that's that's gotta have everything in key position. Interestingly enough, as we look at this slow-mo of Thomas getting up on his second board. The angle appears to be good when he sets the board, but the minute he gets up on there, the board sinks down and grips into that pocket. Luckily, he had more or less a flat board at 90 degrees, so that wasn't a major sag, and he could push off that back foot a little bit, but it would have been a little bit better had there been a little bit more angle so that he can really hammer into it and cut his time off a little bit more. So... Again, it's experience, it's trying it and testing it and seeing what works and seeing how you can, you know, push the boundaries a little bit to try and get that perfect forehead pocket. That's uh, wanted to ask uh, because I'm pretty sure that'd be interesting for our viewers. You've been showing it to me, but I know it wasn't on camera yet. The, the, the difference it makes, you know, if the board is like this or like this, just, just for that uh, 
angle you get. Being able to switch. push off that but, back foot. But, but you demonstrated so well before. No, I, I just want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> but it does make a difference if you have to cut like this or if you can chop from, yep. from up there. And uh, I think that's what it's all about. Uh, by the way, a lot of chopping uh, Still going on <laughs> this summer. So we'll take a look at the schedule for the rest of the month and everything you have already missed, but can, of course, uh, get to see online or on uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, here are the dates uh, from August and September, which uh, you should look a little closer at. Ooh, they've just added September and October in there for yep. us. Nice. Nordic Pro Championship coming up on the 28th of August. Before that, of course, on the 21st, the big German Pro Championship, where we still hope uh, we might have a live open audience to go with it. Fingers crossed for that one in oh. Gelsenkirchen. Oh, yeah. Then on the 12th of September, the World Trophy European Qualifier. And on the 2nd of October, drum roll. The individual world championships here in Munich. Yes. So that's uh, a great way to practice for that. And I, I know Armin Kugler's big goal is to be part of those world championships. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing for him because he wants to be in that world championship. He's hey, on a good way right now, but he's got to stay focused for the rest of this competition here today if he wants to qualify for the individual world championships. And hopefully Pia is uh, focused as well. I hope uh, we have somebody in Kesselhaus. Oh, we're back to the springboard. Heat number three, ready for that. Stefan Penke against Hermann Heilingbrunner. Lovely. Yep, and uh, here again, we're talking about two guys that are in two completely different weight classes. So it's going to be really important for ready. Hermann Heilingbrunner to, to get into a three, solid two, board position. One, Let's see how go. he does today. Good board set by Stefan Penka and Heilige Brunner not that far behind. Let's see how this holds him. He uh, looks pretty good on that first board. Having trouble getting that axe out of the block, though. Penka has got a bit of sag, but Heilige Brunner's first board is really nice. It's it's flat, but it's not sagging too much. Important for him right now, as, as it starts to sag a little bit, is to make sure that he gets that second pocket set. Penka really getting in there with the... Uh, the pick and chisel to try and set his second board as he crawls up on top using the axe. Oh no, that thing's sagging a bit too much as he tests the back of the water on that one. Too cold, he's gonna go back and reheat the tub as he tries to set the pocket a little bit deeper. Heilige Brunner has got his second board set and now it's about him getting up there and testing that board to make sure it feels good. If we can get an open angle on that one to see how it looks from our flat perspective, to see how he has got the stance on it. From now, it looks so like it's pretty flat, and Heilige Brunner is now on top, chopping away at that block. He's got a bit of a choked up hold on his ax, so you can see his bottom hand is a little bit farther up because he's quite close to the block, and that means that his board is probably not as stable as he would like it to be, and that means he's come close to the block in order to have the most stable position on the board. But that also means that he's going to be swinging from the shoulders and the arms and not from the hips as he should be. Approaching the two-minute mark, a little skip by Herman there as his axe angle was not exactly on point. Coming up to the two-minute mark here. It's getting close. Heilige Brunner is on the top block. Penka, however, is still working on setting that second pocket. He really is overthinking it. Probably tried the board a couple of times, but we didn't see it. And now Heilige Brunner is exhausted, having used all of his energy in the upper body to try and cut the first side here. Hasn't even switched over to the other side as he barely has any power left in the uh, uh, gas tank. And Penka has just started on his top block, and I don't think we're going to see him or Heilige Brunner making it past the time limit here, unfortunately for both of these guys, as they have fought hard to get up onto the top there, and that's DQs for both of these gentlemen. And for Heilige Brunner, that's really unfortunate because he was sitting in second place with 39 points, but... He should hold on to that position uh, tied with Peter Rich, who is going to be coming up in heat number four. 
That is a bummer. Anytime you see these guys go past a uh, time limit and, and get the DQ on this one, that's really unfortunate. But, you know, it's it's like I said, you got to get those pockets set as quickly and as accurately as possible so you can get good board positions. And you could absolutely see Heilige Brunner at the top there. He was okay. breathing heavy. Unfortunately, oh. two DQs out of time. And, and just like you said, he was so close to the wood. Yeah, he was he was right up there, and he had to choke up on the axe in order to get uh, you know the axe head hitting the wood in the right spot. So you know, and that's what I'm talking about. If your board doesn't feel right, you're not confident with it, and then you step towards the board or towards the block, and then you've got to choke up on your axe. And then once you choke up on the axe, you just don't have the power, and it's all coming from your shoulders and your chest, and there's nothing left there after you try and get through that 23 centimeter block on the top. It's just really difficult. And there you can see Penka. His first board was in position really nicely, and then he just kept cutting away and cutting away and cutting away to try and set that second board. Now, Heilige Brunner, actually had his second board set pretty nicely but once he got up there the tooth at the front of the board where it grips into the wood just didn't have the grip that he felt like he needed didn't feel good about stepping onto the back of it and you can actually see there the angle wasn't that bad he was just above the 90 degree mark so it started to sag towards the end and there you can see Penka. he kept fighting he kept fighting and i love that i love the fact that he just didn't give up that never say die mentality is so important in this in this uh, sport. But that's 140 k's of uh, pure power that has to be held by yeah. by that board. And uh, yeah. I but, I totally understand moving closer to uh, to the timber yeah. than, than moving away. But just try and imagine if he had that board set with a much bigger angle, he could step back and then he could oh. use that power that he has it, to he really finish hammer it two away. Minutes. He'd finish it in no time flat. It would yeah. be no problem for him because he does have that power. So actually, for the moment, I am a little, not to say worried, but we had so many personal bests, and uh, now we had one, two, three DQs already. Yeah. So uh, It's a tough discipline. It's a really, really tough discipline. And I mean, it's, like I said, it's about getting those pockets set. It's about the experience in the discipline. And it's about the fact that these guys come from, you know, from another place, getting into this discipline, which is one of the original disciplines, I might add. Um in order to really get good at it, you just have to do it. You have to practice. You have to keep going at it. And Absolutely, yeah. It's, right it, it, it's been here for so many years, as you can see here. And uh, let's take a short look at the history of the original extreme sport. Expert woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Well. An axeman's gathering. Oh, yeah, love those pictures. Yeah, and uh, this picture here, you don't see it below, but uh, it actually is a three-board springboard. So if you can imagine, the <laughs> two-board springboard that we're looking at today is two meters up in the air. How high up must a three-board springboard you, do? You got eh? proof for that? Yeah. I, I don't mean, believe it's you. It's unbelievable <laughs> how high up these guys. I mean, the original dudes were climbing up the tree, setting a springboard and cop chopping from 20 oh. meters up. Who knows? I mean, oh, wow. it's just crazy. Well, let's see what is happening in Kessler House. We're going right back to the next team. So, Josef Laya up against Peter Rich and two guys that are more or less evenly matched up as far as their stats are concerned. Josef Laya is the guy with the experience in this discipline, however, where Peter Rich will be cutting his teeth 
for one, one of go. the first times, and let's see how he does against the experienced veteran. So, Josef Laya, I believe that was five, maximum six hits for his first pocket. Good board as well as he gets up onto the first one to try and set his second pocket. Now, you'll see these guys will choke up on the axe for these pocket sets because they don't need to dig through and cut through. They just need to set the pocket so that their board sits in position. I believe that was about six, seven hits there for pocket number two. And uh, now there's the angle that Heilige Brunner should have had on his board. And that is a perfectly set board. Oh, that's some uh, nice scaffolding up top there. And uh, Peter Rich is uh, now setting his second pocket, but his first board is sagging, sadly. And uh, hopefully that second board will sit nicely. Yeah, it looks like he's got a good second board there. And a little tiny shift and sag there, but he is still above zero on that. So that's a good thing. Josef Lier, on the other hand, he's got that great second board, and now it's just about trying to trust himself and trust the board to put as much power as he can into that block at the top. Peter Rich feeling pretty good on his. Now you can see his foot position right at the back of the board, and he gets an opportunity to push off that back. And you can see the board, it does wiggle, it does spring. That's why they call it a springboard. But that's okay, as long as the teeth at the front of, or the tooth at the front of the springboard is hooked in properly, you can work it up and down and actually use that to your advantage, pushing off that back leg and putting the power into the block. Both of these guys getting tired. Josef Lier, you can see with each stroke, it's just a little bit harder to get the power into it. Peter Rich, though, has moved over to the other side, and he's done a great job to catch up with Josef Lier. It could be well that he is going to win this battle of two men on stage, but he's got 30 seconds less now to get it done, and he has done it. A personal best for the young man with his first national experience has got himself a 203.37 personal best time on the springboard. Josef Lier struggling. He can get it done, hopefully. He's got two more hits to get it done, maybe three. At that time is running away on him though, and he might be in trouble. Hopefully he can get it through, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. And oh no, just one stroke short of getting the time, and it's a DQ for Josef Lier. Ugh, oh, that is a heartbreaker. One stroke, one drive, and that was it. So in this case, oh, we're looking no. at a couple of guys here who battled right to the end but peter rich i mean here's to being young and full of energy right he didn't seem to get tired he got up there yeah his time was over two minutes so what he's got himself a personal best and you could see the energy was there right through the end josef liar he's been working hard oh, all day long and, and no just, reward oh, yeah and no so reward sorry for him. so sorry for him with one final stroke it was all okay josef your cut was a dq out of time, out of time quite close and uh, your cut was good yeah, Jörg, quite close, doesn't even describe it. <laughs> One stroke was the difference there, and um, uh, what a heartbreak for Josef Lajer. So this first pocket for Josef Lajer was actually really good. Let's count the hits here in the slow-mo if we can. No, we don't get to see it, unfortunately. So the first board for Peter Rich was uh, almost okay. Josef Lier setting his second pocket there. I believe it was like six, seven hits to set that second pocket. And it was actually really good pocket and a really, really good board. Yeah. You can see there the accuracy plays such a huge role. And then he sets the tooth in the front of the board. He had a big angle. I mean, he was plus 30 easy on that one. And you could see here that angle was really to his advantage, but didn't seem like he really used it as much as he probably could have as uh, he wasn't pushing off the back. You could see the board is barely moving. And, uh, you know, he's not a light, light guy, but he's not a super heavy guy either. But Peter Rich, on the other hand, was had his foot pretty close to the back of the board. And uh, he was actually utilizing the spring in the board to his advantage and went to the backside and got his cut in 203.04. And actually, if I look at the standings in springboard, Peter Rich with that time is currently atop the standings in springboard as well is 
atop the standings in the overall. So that means with one more heat coming up, Manuel Heumer or Hauma and Armin Kugler, and uh, if they can get under a minute each, then um, Peter Rich should be pretty safe in the, f the next round. So I've been taking a closer look at Peter Rich, 80 Ks, 182 centimeters tall from Corinthia, and he loves to ride a bicycle. Is that what you need to do to be good at the springboard? Because that was very, very impressive. Well, riding the bicycle is definitely going to give him the fitness that he needs. And I mean, if he rides for long distances, that fitness is going to play a role, especially in a discipline like springboard, where once you get up onto the top, you've been climbing, hitting, climbing, and, and then... You've got to have the fitness level to hit at the top, and that's the main thing here. And actually, through all of these disciplines in these individual competitions, that fitness plays a huge role. So yes, riding a bicycle, definitely something that's going to help these guys improve their overall fitness down the road. But you got to have somewhere to carry your bicycle for those really long trips, right? Well, I I, I, I like to ride the bicycle, but even more my, my car, to be honest. But um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all you need to know about the springboards. That's uh, and uh, I've just heard we're ready for the next heat, and that will of course be uh, Manuel Haumer and Armin Kugler. That's a big one coming up, and a very important one for both athletes. Yeah, you heard Manuel talk to uh, Pia a little bit earlier on and say, yeah, it's not my favorite discipline, but uh, I'm going to do my best. Well, let's see if he can really pull it together in this one. We've seen one personal best so far in the springboard with Peter Rich, and unfortunately, we've had four DQs in that same discipline because of timeout. So, and you can see... The uh, national springboard record is 53-43, and that is held by none other than Armin Kugler. So, uh, yeah. Under a minute would be great today for anybody at this point. So keep a close eye on this first pocket and board Effie's for both of these guys. Ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Four hit pocket for Kugler. <coughs> Manuel Hoima still working on his first pocket. And Kugler has set his second pocket and is putting his board in place now. It's looking good for Armin. And let's see how that board holds under his weight. It's not too bad. It sagged just a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be dropping below the 90 degree mark. So Armin Kugler can uh, now go to work on that top block and uh, looks like he's making short work of it up there. Manuel Heumer, uh, if we get a shot of him, I think he's finally got that board placed and is working on his second board. Yeah. So now he's going to have to set the pocket for his second board, feeling a little bit uncomfortable on the first board. And Kugler starting on the backside of his block on the top already. So he should finish this one in no time flat, probably under a minute. There you go, 59, 54 for Armin Kugler. So he's got it under a minute. And the uh, top time of the day so far. Hoima struggling to get that second pocket set. And again, this is all about the confidence and the practice of getting those pockets set as quickly as possible. Getting close to 40 as we just passed the 1 minute 40 second mark here. He's got to get that board in place and start working on the top block. And as you heard him say earlier on, it's not his favorite discipline. And anytime a guy says something like that, it's not my favorite discipline, you know that he's got to go back and work on that discipline at home to make sure that he has really got that thing locked and loaded for future events. Now, 
Check the board from Hoimer, though. He's only got 30 seconds to go, and he's got to get up on top of that top block and get to work. He's going to try and use the axe to give himself a leg up as he's struggling to get onto the second board there. It looks solid, actually. He's got a good angle on it, so he's placed the second board nicely, but he's just way, way too slow in the time as we've got to 227, 228, 229, and out for Manuel Hoima. That is a bummer because that second board looked fantastic. If he had been able to do that much earlier, then he would have been in much better stead there, but uh, that's a tough, tough, tough job. So we've had so far five disqualifications in the springboard due to timeout with Thomas Fashing, Peter Rich and Armin Kugler all having times that are scored. Okay. Uh, your card was a DQ out of time. Armin, your card is good. Well, and that's an impressive 64 points for Armin Kugler at the yes. moment. Yes, and season's best time, by the way, on that springboard. Great. And you can see here, that was an almost perfect four-hit pocket for Armin Kugler. And we shifted over to this view of Manuel cutting his pocket. He just took a lot of time on that first board. And really, the first board is more about just getting up onto it uh, really not caring about if there's a bit of sag, you know, it's, it's uh, about setting that second pocket really properly and making sure that you can go to work on that top block. And look at this, Armin, on the back side of the top block there, just really confident you could see he too is choking up on the axe on the backside but that's a different position altogether as a cut through the backside it's a bit of an odd angle standing on the block in an unnatural way it's like trying to hit a golf club with your wrong hand on the wrong side and it feels a bit like he's standing a little more to the side just to get yes. that extra angle and to use his, his core yeah. stability a little more yeah. uh, as For we sure. proceed to, to the ranking after round two we only have one more round. That is the hot saw. That is round number three. So it's time to find out uh, who made it to round three. That's six athletes, and you can see them right here. All right. Well, we have Thomas Fashing in there. He managed to stay on the cusp and uh, hold on to that sixth place position. Josef Laya in fifth. Manuel Haumer in fourth. He's in the mix still. He's going to go to hot saw. And we've got Hermann Heiligerbrunner, Peter Rich, and Armin Kugler. Well, that's a very nice combination. These six athletes are going to battle it out. So yep. Of course, uh, all, the, all the tramps and all the aces uh, with uh, Armin Kugler for the moment. But uh, let's take a closer look at the top two going face to face. So it was the young man, Peter Rich, in this case, uh, in our side-by-side -side analysis with Armin Kugler. And you could see Armin Kugler wasted no time in setting that first pocket. Ah, but look at that. Peter Rich was not that far behind in setting the first pocket. The board took him a little bit of time to get in there. And now he just had a bit of a sag there as he balked on his first three swings until he felt like he could uh, finally start hitting. And those first three swings are about four maybe five seconds time. So make an improvement there. Look at that bottom board by Peter Rich though. It just looks like a noodle. And uh, Armin Kugler already working away at the top. But again, this comes down to experience and practice. The springboard is all about practice. You gotta get there, you gotta do it. You gotta get there and you gotta do it more. And then when it's terrible, you gotta look back at how you can improve it and do it some more even again. So uh, Peter Rich, Got up onto his second board well after Armin Kugler was more or less 90% of the way through uh, his block on the second side. And there you can see the difference between these two guys. A minute and three seconds nearly um, uh, and between to, these two guys. So yeah, it's and, all and about practice. To me, practice. it looked like, like Armin got three times more strokes onto that wood uh, compared to his opponent. 
Yeah, I mean, when he was, he was up top, he was hammering, he was away, hammering and away, and that's the thing. He had really good flow. He had really good rhythm. Everything was working for him, and that's that's his experience. I mean, he was never really the greatest springboard athlete, but he knew that this is an area where he needed to improve. So he went back home, and he looked at what things he could do to make it better, and it was really it's just about the practice. And, uh, of course, the wood is very, very important Absolutely. Uh, to, to make sure yeah, that absolutely. all the competitors uh, get the same fair chance. And how we find that, that kind of wood, well, you're going to see right now. Hi, my name's Spike Milton, Global Sports Director for Steel Timber Sports. Today we are in a plantation of young poplar. One of the biggest challenges that I face as part of my role is to ensure that our competitions are supplied with the highest quality wood. We as Steel Timber Sports pride ourselves that all wood is sustainably grown, harvested and recycled to minimise the overall amount of wood processed. Firstly, this popular wood is grown on certified plantations. These are fast growing hybrids which are 100% sustainable. The plantations are predominantly used for the packaging industry and therefore our trees can be considered as a side product. Secondly, the white pine for our sawing disciplines is only sourced from certified forest management. No matter where the wood is coming from, it is always harvested with minimum impact on the natural environment. Each individual tree is examined for its conformation before processing. What we are looking for is consistency, which means not just how straight the tree is, but also how uniformly round the wood is. We need to make it fair for all athletes. So we are selecting different sections of the trees to use for each of our specific disciplines. I'm Bart Jensen, Head of Wood Management, and together with Spike, we have a wealth of knowledge and experience with long-term sustainable wood management. With our resistograph, we also measure the density of the wood. That is how hard or how soft the wood is and if there are nuts in it. To ensure the quality and high standards required for premium competition wood, we need to have a consistent grain structure with a uniform size, thus providing equal standards for all of our athletes. I don't see any nuts, so this tree is good for me. Once the trees are felled, extracted and transported to our facilities, we measure, mark and then cut the wood into sized blocks. Dan Jans here. As a specialist chainsaw operative, I oversee the further processing of our premium competition wood from the plantation to the stage. Removing all visible imperfections and knots that could affect the chopping or sawing of the block. We then peel the blocks ready for competition. Careful selection, the blocks then leave our yard and are distributed internationally to our steel thermal sports competitions, guaranteeing fair competitions for all our pro, intermediate, rookie and woman athletes. After all our steel competitions, all the spent wood is collected and recycled right down to the wood chips and sawdust, which for example, is converted into renewable energy in the form of wood pellets for biomass. Only two thirds of all organic residues results from competitions. One third is already from wood preparation. In order to achieve a long-term consistent premier wood supply for the coming years, we quest to find certified partners. This ensures that all newly planted trees are nurtured and managed promoting maximum efficiency and sustainability for the future conservation of our valuable forests. Therefore, as you can see, with good harvesting practices and good management with silver culture, the ground is quickly replaced by new trees or could even be used for arable for farmers and future rotations. Well, the original extreme sport has become a long way to become steel timber sports. Uh, we've just seen it. This is absolutely professional and you need to be 
a clear pro to do our last discipline, the hot saw. Yeah, you can't mess around on this one. This is the other finicky discipline that I mentioned earlier on in the broadcast. Uh, besides the springboard, this next one can mess with your head in so many ways. We're going to find out about that shortly. These custom handmade race tune machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single cylinder two stroke engine, often taken from a snowmobile or high powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. Hot saw. For the hot saw, power saws are called into action and the athletes have a space of 15 centimeters to cut three complete discs off a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. Jumping the start or cutting over the line will result in a disqualification. Austrian athletes and one guest still remaining. Uh, Lionel Marinicia will start off the hot saw competition and then in heat two we will see Thomas Fasching take on Josef Leier. Then it will be Manuel Haumer against Hermann Heiligenbrunner and finally Peter Rich against Armin Kugler. This is it. This is the final discipline. This is the maker or the breaker. Yeah, the maker or the breaker for our Austrian athletes. It's all about getting three cookies on the deck as quickly as possible. Now we have uh, Ionel Marinicha, who will be on his own on stage to try and get his hot saw going. Now I mentioned this is a very finicky right. discipline and it can mess with your head in warm so up. many ways. So your what saw. happens here is they get a chance to warm up the saw. This is the opportunity for these guys who know their equipment so well to really make sure that everything is absolutely running perfectly. You're going to see two different types of saw engines, and you're also going to see two different types of saw blades holding the chain in place. Now, he has got a uh, Forrester saw uh, a <coughs> blade on there, which is a straight blade. Now, what's happened here is he started the engine up, gave it one quick... Uh, pump of the trigger and i'm not sure if that thing stalled on him or if that was on purpose and normally we're going to see these guys run those engines a little bit longer to make sure it's warm enough and really ready for when they have to do the pull start at the competition but it seems like he knows that saw well enough so it's all about getting into competition mode now but then again anything can happen here so he could pull that string that starter cord and it could not start. He needs to rewrap it then and try and start that saw again. Because these Andy, things are high performance machines, Andy, they are so finicky, anything can happen timber. here. Let's see how this goes Three, for Marinicha. Two, one, go! Gingerly with that first cut, he's got to have three cookies nice and clean within the 15 centimeter markings. And oh, he's cut out. Now he's got to reset it and cut another cookie. And hopefully he's within those markings, but he did see the cutout. Those are beasts. You're wrestling that heavy 35 kilo saw as well as all the machinery that's moving in there and then having to aim and cut clean. So as we saw with Springboard, Marinicha is a fighter. He is a battler. He does not want to give up. Let's see if he's got good cuts. Okay, your cut is good. Jörg's little pause is there. Your cut is good. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's entertaining. It's yeah. entertaining and it keeps the, uh, keeps the pressure up on the guys. Let's put it that way. So they'll set up the stage again really quickly as we take a quick look back here. That's the harvester blade on that saw. And that is a straight, flat blade that holds the chain. Now watch this. Hovers a second to set the saw position. It is wrestling, a wrestling match there. Takes a bit of time on the upstroke for the second one. It's a good cookie. Now watch this here. He cuts out. Cuts a little chip out. Now he's got to reset. That takes a good two seconds to redo that. And in this particular discipline, two seconds is a difference between last and first place. Easily. Now, as he is a guest and just here to get some practice, he will not get 
points for the overall standings against the Austrians here. Uh, but uh, look at that right there. That just is a ton of machinery throwing sawdust everywhere in that mega super slow-mo. And you can even see the chain sparking a little bit there. And of course, there's a lot of points uh, to be gained in yes. this uh, first heat of Austrian athletes. 18 points, I think, is the top amount of yep. points, and that can make a difference also between third and first place in the oh, yes, rankings indeed. at the moment. Yes, indeed. 18 points for being the fastest, 15 for the second, 12 for the third, and so on. So both of these guys on stage now, Warm Thomas up. Fasching, Josef yes, Leier, so. have under 10-second hot saws. And uh, there again, you can see the harvester blade. Let's see uh, if the other saw also has a harvester blade or if they have the big, fat, bulbous blade on there. Um, I'm of the opinion that the big, fat blade... No, they're both using that straight harvester blade. I'm of the opinion that that big, fat uh, blade on those saws allows for... Uh, the chain to have a little bit more tension, therefore having it less of a risk of it coming off the blade, which we have mm. seen in past. We have seen that, yes. Yeah. With Martin Komarek was uh, one seconds. of the big ones where it came off and he was battling hard to get it back yeah, on, but he just went over the time. So, uh, yeah, let's see how this battle goes between these two gentlemen here as they are ready and raring to go and rip some wood with these hot saws. For all you gas heads out there, it is a fantastic discipline. Especially if you see it live, if you hear it live, oh. if you smell it, if you... Oh, it's, it's just... So loud, it's so fast, it's so noisy, Andy, it's great. Ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! There's a flyer, and Thomas Fashing into that wood nice and quick. Both of them getting three good cookies on the deck. Josef Lyer with a personal best Whoa. and Thomas Fashing with a personal best. Josef Lyer, a 710 and an 893 for Thomas Fashing. Fantastic. Two personal best improvements down on the deck there with three cookies hitting the floor. But it looks like Josef uh, Lyer had to cut another one. Now, I'm not sure what happened there. Let's find out what the judges say. Is that a complete cookie? It looks like three complete cookies already on the deck. So I don't know what happened there. We might have to get the slow-mo action on that one to see what the situation was. Oh, no. Yeah, you can see there's got a cutout on one of those first three cookies. So he had to go back and recut a fourth cookie in order for it to count. So that means he's going to have a much slower okay. time. Both cuts are good. But there's always so yeah. much drama in that hot There's so always so much drama, yeah? Now that... 701 personal best time of Josef Lyer is not actually going to stand. After nope. he had to cut a fourth cookie, his time was adjusted to 25.91, meaning Thomas Fashing had the faster time of the two with an 885, and he had a personal best as well. Let's see if we can really see what happened here. So that's Thomas Fashing there. Uh, that's the little chop, but even with that, he had to reset, and he's got a personal best. Josef Lyer on the other side there. I don't know. It seemed to me like he had three good cookies and then he saw something and had to rewrap the cord because he had already stopped the saw and restarted to cut that fourth cookie. Let's hope that was not just a bonus cookie. Well, I mean, we did see a cookie lying on the ground that didn't look to be complete, but I'm not sure if that was like a piece that broke off after it got cut. See like what just happened uh -huh. there? So I don't know. That's uh, it's an interesting situation there. But he kept running the saw, so that means the time would have kept going. All right. Oh wow! Two hundred and ninety k's on stage now. Yeah, two big boys, and uh, I mean these guys can really, in this case, they can utilize that power uh, and that that weight that's behind them to manage and handle these saws probably better than anybody else in this discipline. And so far, these saws have been more or less exactly the same setups. Mm -hmm. Rotax engines with the harvester blade. So here's an opportunity for Warm Hermann Heiligebrunner to gain Yo, some so. good points. If he can be faster than Thomas Fashing and hold the top spot, even when Armin Krugler gets into the mix, he may well jump up. But he's going to need actually a lot of points to catch up with Armin Krugler right now. So Armin Krugler is just in control of this competition at the top.
All right. The calm before the storm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just going to say, that was a bit scary. So we've just been given a 30-second warning or 15-second warning. You can really hear it clearly, but uh, a couple of oppor- or an opportunity there just to give a, a lift to make sure they're really on point with their positioning and everything. Got to make sure the top of that block is clean. You don't want it dirty when you cut it away. Here we go. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Interesting. I think Hoima didn't have his hands. He didn't have his hands on the wood, so he's going to get a DQ there. Uh, And we've got a cutout as well. So we might have problems on both of these guys. The time for Heilige Brunne is 9.09, and Heumer was the one who had the cutout, so he went back. But uh, a 16 or an 18.62 would be a personal best, but I do believe that he did not have his hands on the wood, so that's going to cost him. Not have the hands on the wood, but why? All right, so there's investigations going on on both sides, but it was really clear from the start of the competition that Hoimer didn't have his hands on the wood. Okay, unfortunately, two DQs, your DQ, your finger were not on over the line, and uh, you did not cast three entire discs. Well, that's a nice way of putting it. Your fingers were not on the... <laughs> they weren't even on both the wood of, at all. <laughs> both of his hands were just on his saw. Yeah. He must have uh, completely blacked out on that one. I don't know. We'll uh, take a look at it again here. This is just before the start there. We see Heilige Brunner with a final lift test and Hoima. But and I saw him in preparation. He had his hands on he the... He did. He wood. did. Yeah. It was, it's, a, it's a strange situation there. So there we see the first cut. Ah, uh, there's the cutout at the, um, uh, yeah. that second cookie. Obviously, he didn't see it. And the third cookie, the piece broke off at the top, so he really didn't have three complete cookies. And there was right at the start. He wasn't even anywhere near the wood. He has hands on the saw, so that's a no-no right off the bat. He's going to get slapped on the wrist, and he did with a DQ. So unfortunately for both of these guys, it was just a, yeah, a little bit of a flub. There is the incomplete cookie number one. That one would have counted, I would say, because the piece only broke off because of the pattern of the wood there. So it was that second cookie, not the third one. The second yep. cookie was incomplete. Now uh, you can see that was a nice thin cookie, but it was just a little bit too thin at the top as he uh, cut out of it and had to reset the saw. And I mean, it's just... These are things that uh, that he's probably, you know, uh, 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 Halmer is probably going to the back. What am I thinking? <laughs> I didn't have my hands on the wood, you know? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Many it happens to all of us, but... Yeah, uh, every, everybody makes a mistake now and then, and that one just cost him uh, the time that he probably would have had there in this one. But uh, it's interesting now because that leaves the door wide open for Thomas Fashing with the fastest time thus far to move up and uh, Peter Rich and Armin Kugler still coming up in this hot saw here. Well, to be honest, uh, to me, it's it's the big showdown now between uh, Peter Rich and Armin Kugler. Yeah. 11 points the difference between the two. So uh, it's uh, Armin Kugler who is to favor. But as we've just seen, if you get a DQ, if, if your saw doesn't start, uh, yeah. if you have an incomplete cookie, wham, you know. Yeah. And so far, all the saws have started cleanly. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at uh, a couple of DQs there because of, you know, minor things. A cutout, and hands on, not on the wood, and that's a big thing, right? You want to make sure everything is fair. Your hands have to be on the wood, over the line, before you go down to the saw, start it, and then make your cuts. So, um, yeah, small mistakes, big cost. So we are getting ready for this uh, final heat. Armin Kugler against uh, Peter I'm sweating. Rich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just heard uh, the most impressive uh, competition is something we can talk about before we go to this final heat. Uh, what has it been so far for you? Um, that's a tough one because we've had a lot of good battles throughout the day so far. Uh, I'm going to say probably in the underhand chop with uh, 
uh, Manuel uh, Hermann Heiligebrunn, excuse me. Um, I think that's a, that's a really, uh, you know, it was a really good underhand chop. And you can see he's good on the underhand chop as well. And also he was fantastic on that single buck. So oh, yeah. I'm really impressed at how well he's been doing today, even though he said in an off-screen interview earlier on that his <laughs> fitness wasn't where it was supposed to be. Could have fooled me. For a big man, he's looking pretty spry out there. So good job. And of course, uh, Armin Kugler being very impressive so far, but that's yeah. what we expected. He was the yeah. man to beat right from the beginning, and he's the man to beat in this final heat. This is hot, so heat number three. Or four, yeah, if we, if we count our guest in. But so number three of the Austrian competition, Peter Correct. Rich against Armin Kugler, the number two in the overall standing against the number one in the overall standing. This is the showdown. So for Peter Rich, no matter what he cuts today, as long as three cookies are fair, he's going to have a personal best because this is his first time cutting in competition with the hot saw. So, uh, yeah, for him, it's all about just getting three solid cookies on the deck. He knows that he is going up against a seasoned veteran, especially in the hot saw. You could see his personal best, Armin Kugler, is a 706 in the hot saw. So uh, it's not about Peter Rich trying to beat the time of Armin Kugler. Naturally, that would be a bonus for him. But uh, moreover, it's about him just getting three good cookies on the deck, gaining some experience, and getting a personal best here. Warm so up. here we go. You saw. So far, I've seen no crazy variations on these saws. The guys obviously liking uh, in Austria the way that, that the harvester yeah. blades are working. Everybody's had the same setup, more or less. Um, you know, most of these guys will own their own saws. They'll invest a lot of time and money into making sure that these saws are absolutely what they want to have out there. They'll do tuning to it a little bit. They can tune it a little bit. They can tune it, you know, a ton if they want. Uh, at the end of the day, it's an open season for that wood, basically, with these saws. I mean, and when those blades are spinning at uh, 250 kilometers per hour, uh, no piece of wood's really going to fight back too much with that one. So um, these guys uh, have, uh, you know, they'll mess with the engines. They'll mess with the, the fuel Happy. mixtures, as we heard with Red. Danny Martin. Oh, yes. You know, he's got special Stand gas for his. So here Woo. we go with the last Three, heat of the day. Two, one, go. So both of these guys really taking their time to make these cuts. And Peter Rich looks like he's got three good cookies on the deck and a 10-17. And there it is, that personal best. Uh, we're going to have uh, a, uh, an incomplete disc I'm hearing on one of the stands. So they're going to check that. Oh, oh yeah, no. that is unfortunate. Oh, Peter Rich. Oh, come on. And that's what I talked about. You know, the nerves played a role. And uh, oh, he's got the oh, incomplete cookie there, so that so personal close best. to that great time yeah. also. That would have been a brilliant one. It would have been brilliant for him to have that personal best, but I'll tell you what, Thomas Fashi okay. with an 885 in second place and Armin Kruger with incomplete an 830 this, in first. But Armin Jokat was good. And I mean Kugler, I mean, he was as cool as a cucumber. Yeah. So impressive. Just well, taking his time and still, you know, <laughs> being there right on top. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. I mean, he had the luxury of being the last guy to go because they switched the, re the order of the rankings. And so, um, you know, he saw everybody else. He saw the number of DQs that were there. He saw his score stay solid at the top in the overall rankings. And all he really needed to do is get three cookies on the deck. And this is the thing that Peter Rich probably misunderstood here. Yeah, he wants to have a fast time, but all he needs to do is get three good cookies mm. on the deck as well. And that was the problem. He cut out with the toe of his, uh, or the front end of his blade. And there you see three clean cuts from Armin Kugler. Oh, he even layered them on the oh, floor I was perfect just gonna form. Say, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> How impressive is that? Yeah, if you have here, here yeah. you go. Take a look. I know. meant to do that. <laughs> Just fantastic. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, I really feel bad. I feel bad for Peter Rich because he was so solid, uh, but you know, he still ends up in second place in the competition today. So that's really, really oh, that's, a good result for that young really, man. But you don't want that DQ. You know, no. get another cookie. You know, have no. your time for that. But. Uh, here we have the, the, the final results, uh, and as you can see, and as we have already mentioned, uh, 
Armin Kugler, a very impressive win with 82 points. But Peter Rich, hey, come on, that's uh, brilliant. Claiming silver here. That's awesome. The Austrian Big congratulations to him. 53 points and uh, Fasching, Thomas Fasching in third. So he's going to be very happy about that. Uh, for Josef Laie, it just didn't work out with uh, 46 points. But uh, boy, that was a great competition. That had everything. It had the everything. Start till the end. I mean, we had timeouts, we had DQs, we had personal crazy best. heats, personal <laughs> bests all over the map. That's exactly what you want to see with the competition. Obviously, you don't like to see these guys get the DQs on these timeout situations, but. You know what? These uh, you know these guys did a great job today. It was a fantastic competition, and uh, we have a new Austrian or rim, yeah Austrian champion. And uh, yeah, these guys are going to be looking forward Pretty to stuff. getting uh, in their trucks and driving home now. Huh? Uh, by, by the way, getting in their trucks. Uh, there's one I'd really like to get in, and I'll, I'll show you right now. That's my truck. Ford I Render, hope. Ford yes, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Well, Troy, you know my birthday is coming up. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've got a while before mine, but, uh, you know, we could change back and forth. You give me the Raptor, I'll give you the Ranger. We're good to go, yeah? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, uh, just uh, for the credits, uh, let's take a look at uh, Kugler versus uh, Fasching in uh, that competition going head to head. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see and hear what you have to say to that. Yeah, the only two guys that are managing to get under the nine-second mark in the hot sauce. So let's take a look at that and uh, compare their styles. So both of these guys got a good pull on the start. Fashing was a little bit hesitant on that upstroke as he tagged the bottom and uh, was a bit slower. Otherwise, I would say if we had to compare these two because of that small mistake on the but bottom, he, he would have been faster. Yeah, he yeah. was faster on the first cookie. So, so that again yeah. is showing how this competition. And by the way, that comparison together. went like this. I mean, that's <laughs> how fast these guys are with the hot saw. Unbelievable. And that's how important the hot saw is. You know, it yes. all goes down to this one, uh, this one discipline. If you want to take the big prize, and uh, Armin Kugler managed to do so very, it very is. impressively. Um, of course, in uh, ninth position, uh, Johannes Maurer today, eighth, Stefan Penke. Günther Thalemminger makes it to 7th. Manuel Haumer on position 6. Number 5, Hermann Heilingbrunner. And number 4, Josef Leier. And the top 3 are going to be announced by Pia live in the Kesselhaus. And that's where we're going now. Yes, thank you, Marcus, one very last time from the unique Castle House here in Munich. Well, what a finish for this fantastic weekend. It's just been like, wow, there have been a few DQs, but so many highs. Unbelievable. And another one is about to happen now. The official award ceremony of the Austrian Pro Championship 2021. Now I please Thomas Fasching to come onto stage to mount the podium for the third place. 
He finished with a sum of amazing 80, 48 points. Well done. It's been amazing. <laughs> With the broadest smile, he is accepting his award. In the second place, with overwhelming points of 53, is Peter Ritsch. A great performance, this was stunning. And I think this is what real joy looks like. And the man of the hour with overwhelming 82 points in first place, the national champion 2021 of Austria is Armin Kugler. Not only receiving an award, he's also receiving a spectacular trophy, handmade by a Tyrolean artist. Have a look. It's beautiful. Now the only thing missing, well, what is that? The champagne shower. <laughs> this will be unreal. Okay, also. <lacht> Geht's? Ja, okay, perfekt. Das war doch jetzt ein Wahnsinn, oder? Du hast gesagt, du bist dir nicht sicher, ob du es hinkriegst. Du hast es hingekriegt. Was sind deine Gefühle? Was sind deine Emotionen? Wie schaut es in dir aus? Ja, ich bin froh, dass ich es wieder geschafft habe. Ohne die Q. Sichere Leistungen. Bei der Hotzau habe ich noch mal gezittert. Die erste Scheibe war für mein Gefühl zu, zu groß. Jetzt hatte ich nur mehr wenig Platz. Dann habe ich noch mal Tempo rausgenommen. Und es hat dann doch geklappt. Alles im sicheren Bereich. Und Sieg wieder mal heimgefahren. Und möchtest du noch irgendetwas loswerden in die große Weite der Welt über den Livestream? Ja, ich bin dankbar an alle, die mir beim Training unterstützen. Die Leute aus meinem Verein. Meiner Frau, dass sie mir so viel Freizeit vergönnt zum Training. <lacht> Und ja, ich bin wirklich happy, dass das geklappt hat und alles so schön läuft. Ich gratuliere nochmal herzlich. Das war ein Wahnsinn und ich hoffe, du feierst heute noch richtig. Ja, jetzt ist ja Bier ausgehen. To sum it up, just very quickly. He said the emotions are unreal. He didn't expect that because Hotza wasn't going that well, but he did it, he succeeded, and he's really happy about that. It was a secure cut, or three secure cuts, and well, he probably gonna party a little bit today, and he's very thankful for the support of his wife and all the free time he has. So that was it for today from Munich, from the Castle House. I thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed all the interviews and being with me. And well, we'll see each other hopefully at the next competition. And now one last time back to the studio to you, Marcus and Troy.
awesome pictures from the Kessel House. And did you see Armin, the cat Kugler, jump Jumped onto the, the podium? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Fantastic. I love it. Brilliant. But stuff. I have to say, I'm really impressed with Peter Rich, uh, the guy, first real pro national competition on the podium in third place. He's had great results, but this is his best result so far. His good results came uh, previously when he was in the rookie competition. And uh, big congratulations to him on the podium for his first major national competition as a pro. Good job. Absolutely. And we'll be back soon, ladies and gentlemen, on the 21st of August. We've got the German national championships coming up. Make sure not to miss out. And just to give you a good feeling uh, before we go home, the highlights of today coming up for your entertainment in just a few seconds from Troy and me. It's bye bye and hopefully see you soon. Ciao, everyone.